be presented by AT&T Uverse TV. The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are the West. What a stirring way to begin a special night of baseball here at Rangers Ballpark in Arlington. The Strikeout Kings with a great rendition of our national anthem. The Rangers get ready to take on the Astros in game two of this three-game series and the end of this long homestand at Rangers Ballpark in Arlington, but it's a very special night. As Fox Sports Southwest and the Texas Rangers Foundation partner for Benefit 2013, supporting tornado relief in Oklahoma and North Texas. Hi there, and welcome to Rangers Ballpark in Arlington inside the Captain Morgan Club. I'm John Radigan, and we are basically running a telethon here in addition to the baseball game tonight. So many opportunities for you to help us help the people who were victimized so horrifically in those tornadoes in Oklahoma and in North Texas back in May. We'll give you all the details of how you can help, but I can tell you there are some great auction items, packages behind me on this board. They are also present at foxsportssouthwest.com. Go to the website while you're watching the game. Check out these auction packages. Bid on them throughout the course of the night. We'll update you through the course of the night. We'll also bring you some stirring and emotional interviews with people who were victims and first responders back in May. But for now, it's time to talk a little baseball. And to do that, we take you over to the broadcast booth where Buzz and Tom are standing by, guys. Thank you, John. Yeah, it's an exciting night out here at Rangers Ballpark. A lot of great things going on, not the least of which is a pretty good baseball game. Travis Blackley uh, coming right over from the Astro organization. He is making the start for the Rangers tonight, Tom. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. The Rangers just acquired him, and he just pitched for the Astros. Unfortunately, he hasn't been stretched out for 90 or 100 pitches. Right. He's probably going to hope for maybe 60 to 80 pitches tonight. He probably says 80. Wash probably says 60. We'll see how that turns out. But he, he looks like he's going to have a spot in the rotation if he can pitch well tonight and more power to him. At least he can't beat the Rangers anymore. Well, and, he, yeah, and at least he knows the team he's going up against. He knows them as well as anybody. Ron Washington and the Rangers getting set to face the Houston Astros without the starting lineup. And the first pitch right after this on Fox Sports Southwest.
Texas Ford dealer. Don't miss the Ford Summer Spectacular featuring Blockbuster Deal. Now playing at your best in Texas Ford dealer. By AT&T UVerse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. And by Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. A beautiful evening here in Rangers Ballpark. A lot of great things going on. And Travis Blackley coming up from AAA, making his first start. And here's the Astros lineup. Blackley is well aware of, very familiar with, and will face tonight. Robbie Gross from the left fielder tonight leads off. L.J. Hose bats second, then it's Jose Altuve. Jason Castro bats cleanup. He's the catcher. Chris Carter gets the start at first. Matt Dominguez is at third. The D.H. just called up from AA is Max Stassi. Brandon Barnes in center field hits eighth and batting ninth. The shortstop, Marwin Gonzalez. Now we'll check out the progressive scouting report for Travis Blackley. He's one and one, a 4.89 ERA. He's had 42 games with the Astros this year in relief. 23 career major league starts. This is his first since October 2nd, 2012. That was a great start for him when he was with Oakland. He beat the Rangers to bring Oakland within a, to a tie with the Rangers late in the season. So that was a huge game in Ranger history and a big game for Travis Blackley. Ron Washington sending the 30-year-old left-hander out there, the Australian, the first Australian to pitch for the Rangers, first Australian to play for the Rangers. And the first pitch of the night to Robbie Grossman is high for ball one. Grossman, the switch hitter up there from the right side, 260 the average, three home runs, and 16 RBI. Blackley's second pitch of the night is on the inside corner. It is one and one. 94 degrees tonight under basically clear skies. A breeze drifting in from left field at maybe eight to nine miles an hour. Expect a pretty good sized crowd on hand here this evening to watch game number two in this three game series. Out of play to the right. And it's a ball and two strikes. Blackley pitched on Thursday at Round Rock. He threw three innings, gave up a hit, no runs. And through 40 pitches, so he's kind of on his regular day if he were in a five-man rotation. Only he's coming off a day where he pitched 40 pitches and he's been in relief. So somewhere between 60 and 80 pitches, I guess, is what we'll probably see today. Hopefully One, that will pitch. get him through, you know, four or five innings. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and you hope he has uh, some low-stress innings where he gets through relatively quickly and that uh, will extend his time on the mound being a veteran he knows how to handle himself in a situation like this this is not the first time he's been asked to uh, extend himself a little bit at the major league level the 2-2 pitch chopper out to short Elvis uncorks a throw and that is out number one take a look at the rest of the Ranger defense tonight behind Got Murphy, Martin, and Rios left, center, and right. Moreland at first. We saw Andrews at short. Kinsler is joining him up the middle. Jurickson Profar the start at third base tonight. A.J. Brzezinski catching, and Travis Blackley is on the hill in his first start in the Ranger uniform. Blackley working to L.J. Hodes. Right fielder. Takes just off the outer edge. It's one ball and no strikes. Hoes off to a good start in an Astros uniform. 313 with a home run and four driven in. One-all pitch. And that's a bit high. It's two and nothing. Blackley in his career now making his 24th start. He is uh, overall 6-7 six and seven as a starter. Tom mentioned that uh, game last year, the next to the last game of the season, regular season, pitching against the Rangers and getting that win. Up the middle, it's off of Blackley's foot. Profar charges, throws, and got it. Wow, what a play. It looked like Marlon might have been off the bag as he stretched for it, but that was not the call by Lance Barksdale, the first base umpire. That was a 
fantastic play by both Moreland and Profar. And Bo Porter out there to talk to Barksdale about that play. Yeah, if, if Mitch had his foot on the bag with the ball, it wasn't there very long. It's a kick save. Jerickson reacts, throws on the run, and he gets the call at first base. Astros are going to argue. He might have just come off right at the end. Boy, it's a lot closer than it looked, though. Yeah. When you watched it from up here, it looked like he was way off the base. When you watch it in replay, he was much closer than it looked like to the naked eye. Well, Profar getting credit on that play, and yeah, you know, whether whether he's called out or safe, uh, that was still a great play by the young guy. Yep. Fantastic uh, ability to change directions. He was going up the middle a little bit and had to come back. To his right down toward the line, and then the arm strength to even make it that close. No two gone on a pretty fancy play, a one five three put out. Jose Altuve, the Astros second baseman, steps in against his former teammate. Altuve hitting at 277 as Blackley deals a fastball for strike one. Jose with four home runs, 41 driven in. Rangers have uh, kept him pretty well in check this season. Hasn't hurt them too often. Rip and a miss. Oh, yeah, a big swing. Blackley pulling the string on the curveball. That's five ball games. You see Jose Altuve having a little bit of a problem. 158. He's been hitting in the number three slot for Bo Porter's club for the last two weeks now. He is uh, half that time, as you saw, he's been having problems. Loop to center field, moving to his right. Leonis Martin is there, and that will do it. So, with the help of some defense, a 1 2 3 inning for Thomas Blackley. The Astros gone in order. After half inning, Houston nothing. Texas coming up on Fox Sports Southwest. Your starting lineup is delivered by Fred Loya Insurance. Leonis Martin leads off. Elvis Andrews is playing short. Ian Kinsler bats third and plays second. The DH tonight is Adrian Beltre. A.J. Brzezinski is hitting fifth. Alex Rios is in right. Mitch Moreland at first hits seventh. Juris and Profar the start at third. At batting ninth, the left fielder, David Murphy. We'll take a look at the scouting report. For Jared Kozer, he's off to a terrific start. He's had six starts. He's only 1 and 0, but his ERA is 115. He's had at least six innings pitched and one or fewer earned runs in five of his six starts. Came over from the Phillies in the Hunter Pence trade, in a trade that it looks like the Phillies are going to regret. He's pitched six times. He's given up two earned runs once, 
one earned run three times and no earned runs twice. He's not a strikeout pitcher yet, but he gets a lot of ground balls. Sinker ball pitcher probably breaks a lot of bats. Opponent's batting average is only 211 against him. It'll be fun to watch him as he tries to pitch against the Rangers lineup. And the first pitch to Leonis Martin is a knee high strike. It is nothing and one. Martin batting at 280. Had a big hit, uh, big game last night. Three hits and uh, scored three times, and that 16 to 5 Rangers win. Cozart back to him. Chopper snared by the young right hander. And Leonis Martin out on a nice play. Good reactions by Jared Cozart. One away. Take a look at the Astro defense. Grossman is in left field tonight. Brandon Barnes gets the start in center, and LJ Hose in right. Carter at first, Altuve and Gonzalez up the middle. Matt Dominguez at third. Jason Castro catching. And uh, Jared Cozart on the hill, umpiring crew tonight. Kerwin Danley calling the balls and strikes. Lance Barkdale at first. Vic Carapaza is at second. And over at third, the crew chief, Gary Cedarstrom. Yeah, right off the bat, Cozart's first two pitch pitches, 96 miles an hour, 94 miles an hour. So a little more than just a sinker ball pitcher. He's got some heat. Pitch outside to Elvis, who's hitting at 256. Yeah, Cozart, a 23-year-old from League City, Texas. He was uh, the 2008 draft pick in the 38th round by the Phillies out of Clear Creek High School. Fires a strike, and it's one and one. Elvis, a home run, 43 RBI. Cozart's next pitch. And that's a little bit low. Two and one to Andrews. Elvis, a couple of hits last night, also scored three times. Well, the top of that order. Well, the Rangers last night just going crazy. And that really set the stage for the 16-run output. Another one flagged down by Kozar. Boy, great reactions by the young guy. Two gone. I mentioned he was a ground ball pitcher. Almost three ground balls to every ball hit in the air. But right off the bat, he's had a couple of ground balls right back to him. Ball hit pretty well, but on his glove side, so it made that play just a little bit easier. But that's still very nice reactions. Those are the six foot three inch tall right hander. He's listed 180. He might be a little bit more filled out than that now. Here's Kinsler. And the first pitch to him is a belt high strike. He in at 266 with 10 home runs. He has driven across 54. That big breaking ball that didn't quite have enough break on it. It is one and one. That's uh, the primary two weapons that Jared Cozart has. That good, lively fastball and the uh, big overhand hook. Another one, and it's a bit low. After the Phillies right now, Buzz, that's going to be tough to watch over the years. Yeah. Hunter Pence is no longer in Philadelphia. You know, you make trades, give up young players, trying to win a pennant, and that's all understandable. Doesn't mean it's not going to be painful to watch this kid pitch over the next 10 years. Exactly. You know, rip and a miss by Kinsler in the count evens at two and two. And along with uh, Jared Cozart, the Astros got another piece in the bullpen right now, Josh Zide. And a couple of other uh, younger players in that trade. Two and two the count. And ball three fills the count. Our teams like the Angels and the Phillies and other teams in, in their trying to win have depleted their farm systems to the point where it's hard, it's hard to make up for that, at least in the short term. Now, if you're like the Rangers and you have a surplus, you can afford to give them up because you've got plenty left. Well, Ian fighting off a 3-2 pitch. And we'll keep you up to date on the uh, total sum of the high bids. Uh, over 19,000 already, folks. It's the great benefit that uh, we are having these auctions, these auction items up tonight. 
Well, make sure you get involved with it. It's a great cause, and a lot of folks in Oklahoma and uh, the northern part of Texas depending on us. Swing and a miss by Kinsler, and that will do it. Oh, one, two, three inning for Jared Kosar. Rangers gone in order. Now, wait a minute. We're, we're not going to go away. We tip it into the dirt. Kerwin Danley rang him up, and uh, then he said no. He got some help from first base umpire Lance Barksdale and said that foul tip went into the dirt. Well, Kozart wasn't walking off the mound. I think Kozart knew that he tipped it and knew that it went into the dirt. Okay. Because Kozart didn't walk off the mound. He just stayed right on top of the mound. Yeah. And Kinsler drives one to center field. Barnes going back. He stops short of the warning track and hauls it in. So three up and three down finally. Rangers out in order. We finish one. No score in Arlington. Good day, mate, to Jim Knox. That's I it. appreciate it, Buzz. Hey, guess where we are? The great Chuck Morgan's box right here. And for the folks who have gone on to FoxSports.com and seen all those great tornado relief packages that you can actually bid on, we have a late entry, and it deals with the great Chuck Morgan. We're calling it the Chuck Morgan Experience. What's this all about? Well, the Chuck Morgan Experience, how about tickets to a game? I'll get you tickets. Uh, be my guest at a ball game. And then we'll come up here and you can visit in the PA booth for an inning or so. And then we'll give you a choice of either stealing a base, getting to steal third base, or taking the MVP, MVP right around the warning track. So that awesome. that'll be my experience. I mean, up here in the booth, it's great. They, you got a lot of entertainment going on here, of course. But down on the field, they get to go out the, the bullpen tunnel. And they come out on the field and they can steal third steal base. Third. You get third base, the regular third, third base that's going on in the field. Regular, and you know what? Let's add in. They can go over in the video board room. We'll let them push some ribbon panels. How about that? We'll even add that in there. <laughs> that, that, look at that. The guys are loving it in there. All right. That's the Chuck Morgan experience. We'll put that now on the board. Go to foxsports.com. Bid on these packages. It goes to a great cause. Way to go, Chuck. Thank you. Can I bid on that? Is that okay? Sure? Okay, yeah. okay. Okay. I'm off you. Okay. Appreciate it. And Nazi, whether you, you realize stay up there not, long enough, no telling yeah. what Chuck's going to give That's you. That's right. Whether you realize it or not, you're getting charged for being in there. So be part of the package. Well, Black, they're going to work, and uh, Jason Castro now down on the count very quickly. One ball and two strikes. Castro, who was the DH last night until he took over in that ninth inning or eighth inning behind the plate, two fourteen, uh, two seventy, the average, fourteen home runs and forty six driven in. One two pitch. Little calling card for his uh, former battery mate, Travis Black. He said, I haven't forgotten about you. Blackley threw some good change ups in the first inning, got Altuve to pop one up. Has a big curveball, fastball, 89 91 ish. 
You know, there have been a couple of occasions where he's really given the Rangers fits. And the next pitch is high. That fills the count to Castro. So the leadoff man trying to get aboard here in the second. Castro to be followed by the first baseman, Chris Carter. Well, we talked in the scouting report about the game that he pitched for Oakland on October 2nd last year. That tied the A's for the lead. He beat the Rangers 3-1 to one in that game. Rangers were struggling the last couple of weeks of the season, and he kind of started the nail in the coffin that day. Yeah, yeah he didn't let him up. No. Nope. Well, still three and two. Castro uh, catching tonight, and if you hadn't heard that uh, Carlos Corporan, who was hit by that foul tip last night, had to go on the seven-day uh, concussion disabled list. Well, that sure looked like it was going to be something serious. It hit him right in the middle of the forehead. It was not a glancing blow at all. Yeah. That is one out. One of the packages, Buzz, that we have is golf with Daryl Moose Johnston. Play golf with a moose. This special VIP package will delight any golfer and Dallas Cowboys fan. You and a friend get to play 18 holes of golf with former Dallas Cowboy and Fox NFL analyst Daryl Moose Johnson at the Four Seasons Dallas at Las Colinas. Then enjoy a three-course meal at the Four Seasons Cafe on the Green with Moose and his guest. Boy, that's a great day. Great golf that course. Is. Yep. And I've never met Moose, but I've watched him on TV, and you can just tell watching him that he would be a great guy to golf with. Sure would. Got a good personality. Seems like a genuinely nice guy. Don't know what kind of golfer he is. I assume he's pretty good. <laughs> but that's not the purpose. The purpose is to play a great round of golf and contribute to a wonderful cause. Well, Chris Carter up there with the bases empty and one away. Carter now ahead in the count. Two balls, no strikes. Carter getting the start at first base tonight. He was in left field last night. 214 the average. He's the Astros leader with 23 home runs and 63 RBI. 2-0 pitch to him. It's a changeup that floats low, and the count is 3-0. Blackley uh, very well aware of Chris Carter's ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark, especially against left-handed pitching. He's being very careful with him, and rightfully so. Well, the way Cozart has been pitching, you just have the feeling that it's not going to be a high-scoring game. Yeah. And so you have to be careful to a guy like Carter because one swing of the back can determine the outcome of the game if he pitches today like he's been pitching and the first pitch. inning is any indication looks like he's going to yeah, pretty good stuff doesn't he yep the three and one to Carter Carter hitting a number five slot he'll be followed by the third baseman Matt Dominguez Blackley a belt high set and the pitch is low ball four well, Carter draws the walk and that's another thing that Carter does pretty well despite Hitting 214, Carter draws a lot of walks. Now let's take a look at tonight's AT&T Twitter poll. And we would like to find out from you, who would you most like to meet? And the uh, first trio <laughs> would be Tom, myself, and Jim Knox. That's hashtag FS Broadcasters. If you we don't stand a chance. No. Or how about Nolan Ryan? And hashtag FS Nolan. Then there's the uh, Fox NFL team. That's Kurt Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. That's hashtag FSNFL or Regis Philbin. It's like saying, what chance would I have tonight if I put a uniform on and faced Jared Cozart? Uh, about the same chance as we do of winning that. <laughs> <laughs> about the same chance you'd have of, let's see, who, who you have to get out? Uh, getting Jason Castro out tonight. And all those folks, by the way, that uh, were listed on there, your choices for the AT&T Twitter poll. You can bid on packages that include all of us. There's Dave Oliver, former Ranger third base coach, all around good guy, sitting down there with Nolan and Jim Sunberg. He's a funny, is a funny guy, boy. Yes, he is. Blackley back to the plate in the dirt, and Brzezinski. He used, he used to have this line that he would say when he met someone for the first time. He would say, "Yeah, it's very nice to meet you." Uh, are you local or are you from around here? <laughs> person would answer it just like he asked the normal question. 
A ball and a strike. The count to Dominguez. Carter at first base. One out. Scoreless ball game here in the top of the second. Check swing. The pitch gets away from Pierzynski. And down to second goes Carter. And the uh, pitch called the ball as uh, Dominguez was determined to have checked his swing. We'll see how the pitch that got away from uh, A.J. is ruled, whether it's a pass ball or a wild pitch. It's going to be a wild pitch, no doubt. Well, Blackley charged with the errant offering, and uh, now runner at second. And went out two and one, the count to Matt Dominguez. Dominguez, as you saw, a 237 hitter, 16 home runs, and 60 driven in. Blackley back to the plate. Now three and one. Kind of struggling a little bit with his command. He's thrown 27 pitches now, 13 strikes and 14 balls. So to utilize your 60 or 75 pitches, whatever it will be tonight, and pitch deep into the game, that ratio is going to have to change yeah. a little bit. Left-handers ready, a check of second. The 3-1 pitch is coming. That ball's hammered to left field. Murphy is going to watch this one go into the seats. And it is two to nothing, Houston. Now, Dominguez with his 17th home run of the year. He got a 3 1 fastball right down the chute, and he didn't miss it. Well, that's, you know, we talk about that all the time, Buzz. When you're behind in the count, it makes a fast, it makes a hitter, if he sees a fastball to hit, a, a much better hitter than what his average might indicate. Dominguez. Looks like he's going to be a good hitter, but he's a 237 hitter right now. But three and one looking for a fastball and getting one in that location. You can forget the fact that he's a 237 hitter. He's a young hitter with power who got his pitch to hit. Well, the Astros jump out in top. Two nothing Houston. And here is Max Stasi in his major league debut. This is first major league at bat for the young catcher. He was playing at Double uh, A Corpus Christi when he got the call after uh, Carlos Corporan had to go on the disabled list. Well, Max Stasi ripping a miss. He's a catcher by trade, and we very well could see him uh, behind the plate tomorrow. Season at Double A Corpus, 277 average with 17 home runs. He drove in 60, so he's got some pop. 22 year old from uh, Woodland, California. And he has gone on strikes as uh, Blackley took something off and got the punch out. Now he's got a good changeup. And if you get, if you can get ahead in the count, you can make a hitter's hitters fish for that pitch. But that's a pretty good changeup when he throws it down there. Chuck Morgan, but he's got some drawing power, doesn't he? Current high bid of $1,000 for the Chuck Morgan experience already. And he just announced it. I guess when you got it, you got it, right? You got it. He does have it. First pitch to Brandon Barnes popped into shallow right field. Kinsler going out. And makes the catch in front of Alex Rio. Side retired, but Matt Dominguez with his 17th home run of the year puts the Astros on the board a couple of times. Bottom of the second coming up, 2 0 Houston on Fox Sports Southwest.
like until the tornado hit, and then it looked like that. May 20th was a horrific day in Moore, Oklahoma, and there were two weeks in May that were terrible in Oklahoma as tornadoes ripped through that area. And we are now joined by the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Oklahoma, Todd Lamb, went to Plaza Towers Elementary within hours after the horrific tornado. Uh, you're right, and you, you, hit, you hit an nail on the head. Horrific. It, it's, it was similar to a, to a five-mile-wide lawnmower blade being lowered on a community. And we lost seven students at Plaza Towers, the footage you just saw there. Horrific. But you know what? As horrific as it is and was and continues to be, Oklahoma's strong, Oklahoma's resilient because of friends like Fox Sports and the Texas Rangers, we're going to rebuild and come back even stronger. And I think a lot of people around the nation, Todd, are, are amazed that people in Moore are rebuilding right there in Moore. That's right. You know why? Because it's home. It's Everybody's got a hometown, wherever that is, a hometown or a place they call home. And Moore is a special community, a very special community. Uh, been struck three times in 14 years by some sort of tornadic activity. They're going to rebuild right there, come back even stronger and you'll see more rise again in a very good way. And there were other cities in Oklahoma that were affected by tornadoes. Uh, you're right. Uh, Moore had the most volume because of the population, but El Reno, uh, Kearney, Bethel Lake, Shawnee, there were 20 counties affected in that torna tornado season this past year. So a lot of recovery. We've had close to a billion dollars in insurance claims, John. You're good luck because Adrian Beltre just hit a double while you're talking, so we appreciate you. And you're a Rangers fan, too. Uh, I, you know what? Well, the first hat I had, remember the old hard hat baseball yeah. that you got as a fan? First one I had it was a T. Now, it was T for Todd because I thought it was cool as a kid. But as a Rangers fan growing up, I met Nolan Ryan before the game. I said, you know what? In my backyard, I pretended I was Nolan Ryan. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so I love the Rangers and what they're doing tonight for Oklahoma. Really special. United, we're very strong. That's awesome. Todd Lamb, the lieutenant governor, we're honored to have him, guys. And he really is a Rangers fan. even knew who I was when I walked up. with honor. <laughs> All right, John. Great stuff. Thank you. Excellent. And you, indeed, uh, Adrian Beltre hit a kind of a topspin line drive that hit right at the base of the wall. Any kind of uh, backspin on that thing, and it's out of the ballpark. And he turned around that high fastball about chest high. So Beltre at second, first Ranger hit of the night. A.J. Pierzynski at the plate. Jared Cozart ready to work the 0-1 pitch. A ball and a strike. And we'll get a look at uh, the damage Adrian Beltre did. You're right at the top of the strike zone, and that's kind of right in Adrian's wheelhouse. The ball got out over Grossman's head pretty quickly. 1-1 one, one pitch. 1-2. and two. That's a pretty good compliment to that mid-90 sinker that he throws. Overhand curveball. Right off the bat, Buzz, it's pretty obvious what one of the keys to batting against him is, and that's try to lay off the sinker that's down below the knees. It looks like it's pretty hard to do first time you've seen him. Throwing a number of pitches out of the strike zone that the Rangers have swung at. Also looks like he might not be that easy to pick up. Kind of a tall, straight over the top. Slightly unorthodox delivery. And that pitch just outside. And it evens the count at two and two. And he's got a great arm. Mm -hmm. A real live arm. It sure does. does. Nice, loose, easy action. And the ball jumps out of his hand pretty well. AJ, as you see, that four-game hitting streak. And he's hit... Uh, 438 over that span of games. Call strike three, and A.J. knew it. Knee high right on the outside corner. And that is a big first out for Jared Kozar. And for A.J. to take strike three and know it, you know that that guy's got a good arm and it's sneaking in there in a hurry. Boy, that ball he walked away like he knew it was a strike. Yep. Must have had some late movement on it that took it out there. Both the umpire and AJ thought it was a strike. A one away. Beltre still at second. Alex Rios steps to the plate. Rios has hit uh, safely in six of the eight games that he has played in a Ranger uniform. One ball, no strikes. Rios, 276 overall with a dozen home runs. 57 RBI. He's had a couple for the Rangers. Not a home run yet. 
joined the team uh, when they were in Houston for that four-game series down at Minute Maid Park. Big breaking ball, bends him back and catches the inside corner. Now one thing that certainly determines, helps determine the success of a pitcher is his ability to keep the ball in the ballpark. And with that power sinker that he throws, he hasn't given up a home run in 40 innings. Outside, it gets by Castro. So down to third goes Beltre. Castro just not, even though he knew what was coming, not able to react quickly enough and got off his glove back to the backstop. Well, another guy that threw a 95 mile an hour sinker was Kevin Brown, and I can't yeah. imagine that kind of guy is easy to catch. It's, if it's on the other side of where your target is, it's hard to move your glove that far and catch a pitch that's going that fast and has that kind of movement. So the Rangers now trailing two to nothing. Uh, Beltre, 90 feet away, and uh, with one out, Alex Rios will try to get him home. Infield playing back, and a breaking ball is chopped down the line. It's a fair ball. Nice play by Dominguez, but not in time. To get Rios in the score is Beltre and Rios aboard with the RBI. It's now a two to one Astros lead. And we'll see how that's going to be scored. It is going to be a base hit. That was going to be a tough play. Had to make us come up with a clean one to get Rios with his good speed at first. So Alex, an infield hit and an RBI. Yeah, it's a tough hop to field right down the line, a short hop. He had the same play last night. A little tougher tonight than it was last night. Knocks it down. Actually recovers and makes a nice throw and yeah. made it a very close play at first base. The Rangers get one back against the tough rookie. Oh, now with Rios at first, Mitch Moreland will step in. Mitch getting seventh in the Ranger order at 244. Takes that breaking ball that's a bit low for ball one. Look at the six starts that he has had this year. His last start was at Oakland. Six hit, six innings, no runs in that game, one walk and four strikeouts. His first start was in Tampa Bay, eight innings, two hits and no runs in that game. Oh, he's been tough on it. everybody he's faced. Best anyone's done against him is two earned runs. Fastball just off the outside corner, two and nothing. Yeah, and he's only getting the six starts that Cozart's had. He has only given up as many as two runs in two of them. Everything else has been zero or one run. That's uh, pretty impressive work by a 23-year-old. Alex Rios, the runner at first. Rangers have uh, cut the lead in half now. It's two to one in favor of Houston, and Cozart will drive Rios back. Alex, of course, a great speed, a good base stealer. That's another element that he brought to the Rangers that everyone felt would really just play right into the hands of the Rangers. 28 stolen bases is good for fifth in the American League. 2 0 the count to Moreland. There goes Rios. The pitch is a strike. The throw is not in time. And Rios has 29. Now he got a good jump and he can really run. And he had to get a good jump and run fast because that was a great throw by Castro. We haven't seen him make anything but a great throw. Ain't nothing he could do on that one. Boy, Rios, one of those guys that doesn't look like he's moving very fast, but he gets from point A to point B in a hurry. His big long legs. Like good base stealers, he's going at full speed in about a step and a half. A two and one, the count to Moreland. Mitch now trying to get that tying run home from second base. Rip and a foul tip on the fastball, and it's two and two. Looks like some of his balls sink, some of them cut. That uh -huh. ball looked like it cut into Mitch. You get a fastball going that fast and moving in different directions. Glad I'm up here talking about it. <laughs> yeah, one easy over three in the lineup. <laughs> two and two, the count. Cozart sets. Check of Rios at second base. 
Check swing on the ball in the dirt. No swing. He appealed down to Gary Cedarstrom. And that fills the count. So Mitch trying to get aboard with one out. He'll be followed by the third baseman, Jerickson Profar. Rangers are run on two hits in the inning. That after a 1-2-3 first inning for Jared Cozart. Castro flashing the signs out. Rios getting his lead at second. Payoff pitch. Wrecking ball call strike three. Well, Mitch knew that. Second called third strike of the inning. Two gone for Profar. And let's welcome in Emily Jones. Em, nice to see you back. Hey, guys. Great to see you. Happy to be back on a night like tonight when we're trying to do such great things, teaming up with the Rangers. And we've got so many great packages I want to tell you about one of them, and that's the uh, live experience with Kelly Ripa and Michael Strahan. The package includes airfare for two and hotel for two to New York City, and you get VIP passes to sit in the audience and watch the show live with Kelly and Michael. A very cool show. If you like sports and you like to talk, kind of like me, this is the perfect package for you. $2,100 is the bid right now. That's not even enough to cover the airfare. We've got to get that bid up. The current high bid right now on all these packages is a once-in-a-lifetime experience with the Dallas Stars as you travel with that team. That one, I believe, up around $3,600. So we can do better. I know it's in the early innings, so let's get those bids up. And, uh, guys, it's good to be back with you. It's great to have you back, Emily. Missed you. Some great packages that you'll hear about uh, all night long, but make sure and get your support in for the uh, Tornado Relief Fund that uh, Fox Sports Southwest and the Texas Rangers Baseball, Baseball Foundation are sponsoring here tonight. 0-2 the count to Profar. Two outs in the Rangers' second inning. Jerickson, a 243 hitter. Cozart. That shoulder high set. One and two. And here's some more on that uh, travel with the Dallas Stars package. Travel for two on the team plane. You get one hotel night stay with the uh, team hotel and two tickets to the Stars road game during the 2013 2014 regular season, plus two autographed Dallas Stars jerseys. And a current high bid at $3,700. And that's gonna that's gonna go higher than that, I would imagine. That uh, you get, a, get the pick of your your road trip on that one. That's a great way to uh, support your Dallas Stars and support this great relief effort. Well, Jason Castro will have to talk to his young right-hander out there. Meanwhile, we got Mutt and Jeff <laughs> at second base. Alex <laughs> looks like a giant. <laughs> looks like an NBA player. <laughs> Altuve listed at what is he five five I think, and that that may be stretching it a bit. But he is one heck of a player I'll tell you that. Now we're set to go. A ball and two strikes the count to Profar. Now two and two. Jerickson a modest three game hitting streak going as you see he's had four hits in those three games. He's driven in a couple. He's had some big hits, big timely hits. 2-2 pitch, high and tight, and the count has gone full. Well, Cozart hasn't walked anybody, but the Rangers have pushed his pitch count up there a little bit this inning, making him work. Bo Porter keeping an eye on his prized young right-hander. Three balls, two strikes, the count. Mitch Moreland saw a hook on a 3-2 pitch. See what Jurickson sees. Payoff pitch on the way. Fastball, and that's chopped down the first baseline. And it goes foul. We'll try it again. No, there's part a partial answer. He saw one fastball. Yep. You have to look for something here, too. Have to look for a fastball, especially when the guy's throwing this hard. Yeah. You look for a breaking ball and get a fastball, and all you're going to do is... Hope it's, hope it's a ball, then you go to first base. But if it's a strike, you're just going to walk back to your position. Look for a fastball and get a curveball. You still have a chance to hit it. 
Be the 25th pitch of the inning for Jared Cosart. And another chopper down the first base side. Well, we'll come back and try it again. One thing you've seen from uh, Jerks and Profar, and I think it's a pretty universal truth, he can hit the fastball. You get most guys that come from the minor leagues uh, to the major leagues, they're going to hit the fastball. I don't think he can throw it too hard for most of them. Yeah, you're probably weeded out before you get here if you have a hard time hitting the fastball. And this one's going to be a fair ball. Chris Carter takes it to the bag, and that will do it. Well, the Rangers do get a run. They cut the lead in half. The run on two hits, they strand one. We go to the third inning. It's the Astros two, and the Rangers one on Fox Sports Southwest. And it'll be uh, Marwin Gonzalez leading things off. Joining us now, as he does every Tuesday evening here at home, Rangers uh, CEO Nolan Ryan. Nolan, really appreciate you coming on tonight. Oh, glad to be there, guys. You no, know, it's a busy night. A lot of things going on at the ballpark. A great uh, deal the, hosted uh, by Fox Sports Southwest and the Rangers Baseball Foundation. The relief work done uh, for the folks in Oklahoma and North Texas. Fox has really stepped up on these events. And we certainly appreciate what you have done, too. And one of the packages that folks can uh, bid on tonight, a meet and greet with you. And uh, along with that, uh, the winner of that and 49 friends will board the yeah, that's right. Fox Sports Southwest Fan Express. And come on out and come to a Ranger game, meet you. And we sure appreciate you uh, backing this, this auction item. Well, I'm just glad to be able to contribute to it. And I think that uh, they'll come out and have a good time and, uh, you know, either a church group or some group can get together and do that, and I think it'll have a, a nice evening at the ballpark. I'm surprised, Nolan, that you didn't auction off a chance for 50 people to come out and take batting practice against you like you like used to do <laughs> down in Port Charlotte. Uh, that that the, that was in the old days, you know. <laughs> I'd be lucky to be able to throw to five. <laughs> I don't think there's ever been a pitcher that got ready between starts no. by throwing to the sponsors in spring training. That in fantasy camp. I got to do that, too. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but the hardest thing about fantasy camp is when I got to throw to the two nuns. And uh, <laughs> Tell oh, that story. That's I, a great I story. I want to tell you something. That was pressure because they had been there the year before, and one of the campers the first day of camp, hit one of them on the arm, broke her arm. So they brought them back the next year, and, and my assignment was to pitch to them. And, uh, oh, I thought, you know, if I hit one of those little ladies, <laughs> I am going to die. <laughs> the 
base hit by Robbie Grossman with one out. He is at first. That's the uh, second hit given up by Travis Blackley tonight. One on, one out for L.J. Hose. So what you're saying, Nolan, is when they talk about certain pitchers that they were so mean they would knock down their own mother, it's, you draw the line at two nuns, right? You got it. I didn't, cro I didn't cross that line. Oh. Uh, but I tell you what, I was relieved to get them. They they both hit the ball, ran the first base. Uh, they were happy, and so was old Nolan. <laughs> Blackley's pitch is a strike to Hose, who grounded out his first time up. Well, Nolan, that, that on your uh, on the packages put together for you. There's not a date that I see uh, on the uh, listing here. Is that going to be during the World Series this year? or? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, if that's when it needed to be, I guess we could do that. Okay. I wouldn't All complain right. about it. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to work it out. There you go. It'd be a double point to Kinsler. To Anders, they turn it over. 4-6-3, and that was Blackley getting some pretty good defense behind him. Nolan, thanks very much for joining us again. Thanks okay, for your Okay, guys, uh, we can't complain how quick that was. No. no. <laughs> All right, after two and a half, it is two to one Houston on Fox Sports Southwest. Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers, by Jack in the Box, and by Mazda. Well, the Rangers come to bat at the bottom of the third, trailing 2-1. to one. The hits are even in this ballgame. The Rangers put uh, a double and a single together in the second inning to uh, get on the board. And then David Murphy will lead off the Ranger third. It'll be Murphy, Martin, and Andrews to face Jared Kozart. Murph steps in, hitting at 223 for the year. One ball, no strikes. David just uh, three out of 17 on this homestand. Let you go back over a little bit longer streak. He's hitting just below 250. Pitch outside. 2 and 0. Oh. The. Uh, only time that Cozart really had a, a struggle, I guess you would say, is against the uh, Boston Red Sox. And Murphy rolls over on an outside pitch. And that will be out number one. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Dana Larson. Dana.
right, Dana, thank you. And it's starting to get to be that time of the year where looking at all the wild card possibilities, division leader leads going back and forth. And Leonis Martin bluffing a bunt and takes the pitch high for ball one. What I was saying about uh, Kozart, the only times that he's really had any kind of a problem at all against Boston two starts ago. He walked five in five innings. That was one of the games that he gave up two runs. Seems like if you can make him work a little bit, uh, he could have a tendency to be wild on, on occasion, which is not atypical for a lot of young pitchers. A little tough to be selective though when he's got a 95 mile an hour sinker that uh, is around the zone. Got a couple of birthdays to try to sneak through. May Medell Feaster from Little Elm is 90 years old today. John Bray from Albany, Texas is also 90 years old. Ooh, borderline pitch right there. Rogers Colgate from Flower Mound 94 Lendl Shaddix from Amarillo was 96 on Friday. Ruby Robinson from Bonham was 92. 3 1 pitch. And another ground ball to second. That two up, see why two he's gone. called a ground ball pitcher. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what the Rangers are doing against him. Evelyn Ellison from Gilmer is 96. Betty and Garland Edgel have their 53rd anniversary today. Angel and Rosa Moya from Hereford, 58th anniversary today. Henry and Patty Wrench from Mansfield, their 50th, 51st anniversary today. Congratulations. I also made a mistake yesterday. I said it was Joe McMurtry's birthday yesterday. Actually, it's today. Joe is the dad of former Ranger Craig McMurtry. Sorry I missed that and had it yesterday Joe. We want you to know that we're wishing you a happy birthday today. 91 years old. Well, I ho hope Down you celebrated there. yesterday and yep. today. You got wished happy birthday both days. There you go. Sam LaBarba from Dallas is 90 years old. And last one Derek Holland and his brother Greg want to wish dad Rick a happy birthday today. Now someone might be watching and say there's no way Derek has a dad who's 90 years old. That's our cutoff. And that's true. We're making an exception for Derek tonight. He said please. So happy birthday Rick. Hope you're watching tonight. A ball and two strikes to Elvis Andrews. Bases empty two away in the Ranger third. A couple of ground balls to second is what the Rangers have mustered this inning against Jared Cozart. Last night, Elvis, a multi steel game. He checks his swing on that big breaking ball and just barely checked it, but he did. And the count is two and two. Elvis stepped back in. The scoreboard has three and one, but it's. Uh, it's two and two is what home plate umpire Kerwin Danley is signaling to everybody so that at least the principals know what's going on. Outside and low now it's three and two. So Elvis trying to get aboard with two outs here in the 30 and Kinsler. Ranger number three hitter is waiting in the on deck circle. Elvis a tapper back to the mound his first time up. Goes Art with a payoff pitch. Breaking ball is chopped foul. Not afraid to throw that curveball nope. three and two. Sure you know, isn't. Last inning he threw one to Mitch with first base open. Man on second base but you got a guy that can steal a base up there with a three two count and he tossed one to him. You walk him he might steal second and score on a base hit. So got a lot of confidence that he can throw that pitch for a strike. Let's see if he backs it up with another one. Doesn't look like it. That got away. Was down in the dirt, and Elvis draws the two-out walk. He is aboard, and with his good speed, 
see if he sets sail for second with Ian Kinsler coming up. Buzz, when you see a guy like Kozar who gets a lot of ground balls and has that power sinker, you can watch from behind him and see that ball sink. Why does what what makes his ball sink and another guy's ball not sink quite so much? I, you know, I don't know. It, it has something to do with it. five guys can hold the ball exactly the same way and the ball will move differently yeah. for all five of them. I, I don't know the mechanics behind it. It's something to do with spin, I guess. Well, and, and hand strength and, uh, you know, all kinds of things. Where the finger pressure is. Yeah, it has, it has to do with spin. That's what makes the ball move. But why somebody can make yeah. it move so much more than another, I, I can't tell you. I, I guess if everybody could do it, there'd be some of the nastiest sinker ball oh, yeah. pitchers that ever lived. But yeah. I guess you just grow up doing it, too. It's not like someone taught you how to do that. There's the update. Uh, well, we're moving along. Uh, 36,000, almost 37,000 now, the total of the high bids. With the dog tags and T-shirts. Hot selling items, you all can get in on that. Pitch out, nothing going on. Yeah, but trying to teach somebody to make a ball move is, is almost impossible. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you try to teach somebody to make a, uh, a two-seam fastball sink. Well, I, it's not going to work <laughs> for most guys. <laughs> and yet some guys, particularly left-handers, and I know I'm going to get some hate mail from left-handers, but they have the inability to throw the ball straight. And it seems like left-handers just throw everything that moves. I think that's something you see as a kid. If you've got a left-handed thrower in your neighborhood and you're playing catch, yeah. I think you sense that his ball does something different than your ball yeah. does as a right-hander. Oh, I, Yeah, I, I had a lot of jealousy. That gave me an inferiority complex real early in life. That's what I'd like to see explained scientifically. Why does something. a natural throw from a lefty tail and a natural throw from a righty not tail if you want to make a generalization? Yeah. And why do left-handers wear their hats crooked? It goes along with making the ball move more. I think it. I have no idea about the hat. <laughs> I have no idea about why the ball tails away either. <laughs> Two and one, the count to Kinsler. Elvis, a pretty good lead at first. Ripping a miss. And that ball. There's one of those that broke like, like a, a slider. Cutter. Yeah. 95 miles an hour. Some sink, some do this. Try hitting this pitch. Yeah, that's a cut Look, fastball. Wow. 95 miles an hour. Comes off his hand and has a little bit of side spin on it. And now you can teach a guy to do that, to mm -hmm. throw a cutter. Now, was that something that just happened, or did he try to do well, that? Well, I don't know. I'd have to ask him to find out. Yeah. I, you know, I, I kind of think he tries to make it cut or throws a two-seamer that sometimes sinks for him. Base hit to right field. Elvis rounding second. He's headed for third. And the Rangers now with two outs. Some damage done. And uh, here comes Adrian Beltre. The runners at the corner. A good battle right there. He had a pitch on the outside part of the plate with two strikes. And just stroked it into right field. Nicely done. That was that same pitch. Yep. Wasn't quite down as much, but not that easy a pitch to do that to. Tie this ball game here in the bottom of the third. 60 pitches for Kozart. Relatively high pitch count for three innings. Quick first inning. A little tougher in the next two. Now Kozart threw only 14 pitches in the first inning. 26 last inning. And he's up to 20 in this inning. A two-out walk, a two-out single. Runners at first and third. Adrian Beltre, who doubled off the wall in left and scored the only Ranger run, is at the plate. Beltre, he has just been on fire in these situations, two of late. Runners in scoring position. He's gone 11 for his last 18. He takes that big hook that's low for ball one. Well, Adrian, the uh, high water mark for the Rangers this year in RBI, 76. It actually ties him with Nelly Cruz. Well, 25 home runs, second to Cruz. Got Andrews at third, Kinsler at first. The 1 0 pitch. Another breaking ball, and that looked like it was a bit low. 2 0. Well, Beltre hit that high fastball off of Kozart last time and hit a top spin line drive that went off the wall. So, uh, Kozart being a little 
a little timid about uh, throwing a fastball to him. Right-handers ready. A check of the runners. Throws him another breaking ball. That one finds the mark, and it's two and one. Pretty sure Adrian was looking dead fastball. Yep. There. Didn't get it. Most people would have been. Now Castro calls time. He's going to go out and uh, out in front of home plate, give the defensive sides in case the Rangers were to set Kinsler going towards second. Castro telling everybody whether he's going to throw through the second base, whether he's going to bluff a throw and try to get Andrews, how they will handle it defensively. The 2 1 pitch. That ball is hit well to right center field. Up the alley, back goes Hose at the wall, and he makes the catch. Right at the 377 marker, Adrian gave it a ride, but came up a couple of feet short. Rangers strand two on a hit and a walk. We're going to the fourth, 2-1 Astros. Tonight, we do it live inside the Rangers broadcast television truck. That's right. A very, very, very secretive spot where this truck is. What are they laughing at, huh? huh? Where the truck is right here at the ballpark. You got the world's greatest producer in the house, Kurt Dyker. You got Dave Burchett, the world's greatest director, and Kevin Lewis, the world's greatest TD. A list that goes on. We're inside live, the Rangers live truck. Go to the FoxSports.com website. You got a bit on this item. It's the behind the scenes Fox Sports Southwest fan experience. You get to spend time inside the truck, see how this broadcast goes. Let's listen in. Put a double box clean and double box. Dave Perchette barking out an order right here. Kevin Lewis punching it on the board. Kurt Dyker making sure everything runs right. You got Eric Jovison right here, right here doing all the stats. Guess what? You get to check everything out in the secluded truck. Top secret. Also, it gets better. Spend some time with Buzz and Tom up in the broadcast booth. You cannot be it. Be it. Bid on this item. FoxSports.com. Go there. FoxSports.com. Bid on the Fox Sports Southwest fan experience. These guys are great. They may even let you push a button over here. Can I do that, Kevin? No, no. no. Okay, okay. Guess not. Back to you, Buzz. Thanks, Doc. Boy, you got me all fired up. And you know, the key to that visit is to meet the Empress, yeah. Carla Janeway, who Jim didn't even introduce. You want to see the price go up, you would have the chance to meet the Empress down there. Well, I think That's Nazi, not to be taken lightly. No, I think Nazi is intimidated by her. Probably. There's a looping line drive. Elvis up the ladder makes the catch. And Altuve is retired. One away here in the fourth. Obviously, we don't get to get down in the truck during the game because we're up here, but 
a couple of times where I've been down there when they've been at work. It is incredible to yeah. watch what goes on in that truck. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, it's you know you hear you hear about the nerve center of yeah. the big play. That's that's, that's the it. nerve center. A whole bunch going on and not too sure about some of the guys running it, but that's okay. Kurt and Dave uh, do a good job most of the time. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. <laughs> it's all for charity. Here's Jason Castro. Castro's catcher. He takes outside for ball one. Castro lined to center field on a 3-2 pitch back in the second inning. 2-1 Houston. Rangers have out hit the Astros 3-2 to tonight, but uh, Matt Dominguez with a two-run home run. But, uh, the damage done for Houston. 1-0 pitch. 1-1. One and one. And let's go back down and say hello to Emily Jones. Em? Well, guys, it's an added bonus on that Rangers experience package. Not only do you get to tag along with Jim Knox during the game, but pregame festivities with me. And I have it on pretty good authority that Ron Washington will let you in his office to listen in on the pregame interview that I do with him. And I always need help with questions. So within reason, I'll let whoever <laughs> bids on that package and wins it, if it's a good enough price and it's a good enough question, I'll submit it to Ron Washington. So we'll hopefully get that bid up just a little bit higher with a little added incentives like that. Wow, this is getting pretty good. Sure Holy is. Holy cow! Yeah, the skipper, that, that now Wash that doesn't know about it yet, but he'll be he'll be on board. Oh, he yeah, yes he will. He he would uh, he would probably allow you to manage a game for him if you, you know, if you bid high enough. He might ask you some questions. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> he'd let you do the media interviews and uh, take the heat off him. Yeah. Two and two, the count to Castro. Winningest manager in uh, Rangers franchise history. Ron Washington. Travis Blackley getting ready to uncork his 48th pitch of the night. It's a 2-2 offering. And he just missed the outside corner. Over the second straight time now, and Jason Castro has run the count full. He's trying to get aboard with one out here in the fourth. He'll be followed by the first baseman, Chris Carter. Castro back in. Rangers uh, shade him on the infield, maybe a couple of steps around to the right. Outfield playing him the opposite direction. Payoff pitch. Out of play. The 33 year or 30 year old Australian Travis Blackley. He's throwing the ball pretty well here tonight. That moon trying to sneak its way up into uh, viewing range above the left field stands. That's not the harvest moon yet. No, it's, that comes later on. Payoff pitch again. Base hit to right field. Oh, Castro. Browns one through the hole on the right side. He is aboard with one out. And Chris Carter coming up, who walked his first time up there. Third hit of the night given up by Travis Blackley. Chris Carter walked. As you look at uh, Castro handling that last pitch. The one on, one out. After walking, Carter advanced to second on a wild pitch in the second inning. And then Matt Dominguez brought him home with the long home run to left field. Blackley a pickoff play, and well, he had Castro leaning the other way. And unfortunately, the throw was up the line toward home. Yeah, Lance Barksdale studying that move, too. <laughs> Yeah, I think if he threw it on the bag, on the second base side of the bag, uh -huh. he might have had a shot at yep. it. Definitely, uh, that's a spot where uh, Jason Castro has not viewed his former battery mate from. Yeah, I don't think he was going anywhere either. No. Long look over there by Blackley. And the first pitch to Carter is chopped foul.
Nothing in one the count. Chris Carter who came over from the Oakland A's in the deal that sent Jed Lowry to Oakland. Two fourteen the average for the big slugging first baseman outfielder. Blackley sets a check of Castro at first. He missed high with a slider. The count evens at one and one. Blackley nods in agreement. The 1 1 pitch coming to Carter. Got him out in front of a changeup. 1 and 2. Carter having a pretty good road trip. Uh, he caught fire, you remember, the last couple of games that the Rangers saw him down in Houston. And uh, on this road trip, this is the eighth game for the Astros away from Houston. He's had a couple of home runs. He's driven in nine runs. He's been a very productive bat in the middle of that Houston order. One two pitch. He'll try it again as that bounder goes off the roof of the Astros dugout. Carter with the power also comes the strikeout potential 165 the most in the American League. Mike Napoli second he is some seven strikeouts behind Carter. Another throw to first again and my Castro's having a hard time reading that that move. Yeah, if if you're Castro and you're not going anywhere. He shouldn't have to dive to get back. <laughs> he's he's really not far enough off the bag to dive, but the move has fooled him every time. If he took a one step in a dive, he'd dive right into foul <laughs> territory. Blackley a long set. Now the one-two pitch. Couldn't get him to fish for that changeup, and it's two and two. Well, maybe Castro's idea of the step and a dive is a step toward second and then dive back. Maybe. Not exactly a base stealing threat, though. I kind of agree with you on that. Blackley back to the plate. Got him swinging. He just kept throwing on the changeup and eventually missed another one. Second strikeout. Now with Dominguez coming up, I'd like to tell you about another uh, auction item. It's the Cowboys VIP game experience. and includes four tickets and a social sideline passes, four of them, to a home opener against the Giants. Now that's the opener against the New York Giants. Plus, you'll also receive an authentic team autographed football. And a football signed by head coach uh, Jason Garrett and by Jerry Jones, the owner general manager. And it's that uh, Cowboy VIP game experience. The biggest, a swing and a miss on that pitch working its way down and in. There's that uh, Cowboys uh, package. Again, the high bid currently is at $3,600. And you know, we got to get some more than that. That's, uh, that's the home opener. That's the opener. For the uh, Cowboys this year on September the 8th. You get a pregame sideline pass, get four of them, four club seats, a parking pass, and you get uh, a couple of footballs signed by the team and then by the head coach and the owner general manager. Fastball is outside to Dominguez, one ball and one strike. Matt Dominguez launched his 17th home run of the year, his first time up. He has now driven in 62, which is just one short of the team lead currently held by Chris Carter. 239 the average for Dominguez. And Blackley again over to first. And that wasn't really a dive, that was just a fall toward, toward first base. 
what he should do is take about a one foot lead and then when he sees the ball go into home plate come off the base a little bit. <laughs> Be like in Little League where you can't go until the ball crosses home plate or something. That'd work. Blackley sets and the 1 1 pitch. 2 and 1. Talking about Dominguez last night, the uh, first Astro player of his age, 23 years old, to hit 16 or more home runs in a year. He has 17 now. The last to do it at that age. Cesar Cedeno hit 26 back in 1974. Little topper down the third baseline. That's going to roll into foul territory. And Travis Blackley made sure it stayed in foul territory. Well, the count is two and two. One on, two out here in the top of the fourth inning. A two to one Houston lead. That was Blackley now has uh, passed the 60 pitch total. Well they'll keep a very close eye on him now and as a matter of fact we have some action beginning out of the Ranger bullpen just in case. Jason Fraser's throwing out the bullpen. Two balls, two strikes. AJ Przinsky flashes the sign out. Blackley says, yep, that's a good one. The pitch on the way. Count has gone full. So now with two outs, Castro will get a running start. He'll be off and moving with the next offering. If Dominguez extends the inning, Max Stasi, the uh, young designated hitter, He'll get his second major league at bat. Now Castro better be careful not to try to get a big jump right here because <laughs> Blackley's will pick him off. <laughs> no, he is going to be running, but he'd be smart if he doesn't try to get a jump. Blackley to the plate. He didn't even start until that ball was thrown. And I don't blame him. That's a good move he's yeah, got. Yeah, sure is. Blackley with a new baseball back up on top of the hill in just a moment. We'll uh, check Jason Castro at first. Peering in for the sign as Dominguez waits. Blackley set. Again, the 3 2 pitch to Dominguez. Out of play to the right. He's had to work to Carter and Dominguez and Castro, the three guys in the middle of the order. He's struggled uh, making quick work of them. Castro has twice taken him to uh, a full count. Carter a couple of times. Now Dominguez. Another 3-2 pitch coming. And another foul ball. Dominguez will see his ninth pitch of the at bat from Travis Blackley. Left hander plants that foot in front of the rubber. Gets the sign he needs and comes set. Long look at first and the 3 2. Looped in the air down the right field line. It is slicing. It will drop untouched right at the base of the wall along the side. No, another foul ball. We'll come back and try it again. 
Well, if you look at Dominguez stats, he doesn't strike out a lot for a young player, only 73 times. But he hardly ever walks either. He's only walked 17 times. So it's not like he's got a great eye at the plate to work the pitcher for a walk. He just has good hand eye coordination and he can make contact with a lot of pitches. This is a great example. That pitch almost bounced up there. He didn't do anything with it, but he touched it and fouled it off instead of swinging and missing at it like a lot of guys would have. I'm not sure that was a full moon at the start of this at bat. Pickoff play at first and Castro back again with a dive. I bet you this is the most that Jason's ever had to dive back to first base. Probably. Against any pitcher since he's been on first base this year. He might feel flattered. Yeah. Blackley's probably flattered making him. He's not. <laughs> well, he is running now. But if you watch when Blackley lets go of the ball, you'll see that he doesn't start until well after. He's not starting now. He's waiting until he knows it's a pitch. Up the middle, it's off Blackley. He recovers, throws, and gets it. You know, Travis Blackley took that blow to the body, but he recovered in time to get the final out. No runs to hit, one man left. After three and a half, the Astros two, the Rangers one. Fourth, Dana Larson here at the Captain Morgan Club, and it is time to tell you about another one of our great auction items here tonight. This is the Michael Buble concert at the American Airlines Center. This is awesome, guys. This is the Grammy Award winning singer and songwriter, and you can see him in style and with a dozen of your friends. It is a very special evening at the American Airlines Center. As I said, 12 VIP luxury suite tickets, including food and non alcoholic beverages and three VIP parking passes. So you certainly uh, would love to be a part of this. Current high bid, $2,600 for this one, but uh, come on, uh, we need even more on this with 12 VIP luxury tickets involved. I know you've got more in you and an update here. Over $62,000 in bids so far and a high bid of 7200 on that Kelly and Michael Strahan experience, the Kelly and Michael show that trip out to New York. So uh, generous Ranger fans bidding an awful lot right now and it is time to uh, put our love behind Michael Buble. Buzz and Tom um, All right, Dana, thank you. And don't forget, folks, this is uh, helping a cause that's uh, very near and dear to a lot of folks that uh, have to be watching tonight and maybe even here at the ballpark. The Tornado Relief Fund for the folks up in, that were touched in Moore, Oklahoma, and also in the Granbury, Tech, North Texas area. Well, they can certainly use your help. A lot of devastation, and they are working, and they need help to, uh, to recover from it. A.J. Przinski leading off the Ranger fourth inning. Two to one Houston. 
He's okay. doing something you very seldom see, and that's take a strike. Yeah. Trying to make him work a little bit. Well, the Rangers, so far as you can see, have uh, gotten him up over 60. 66 pitches now for Cozart is likely talking to Mike Maddox. A little mechanical uh, adjustment Mike's talking to him about. The strike. AJ watching it in. It's two and two. Yeah, he pretty much went up there and with a game plan, make him throw some pitches. Brzezinski called out on strikes his first time. Taps that one back to Cozart again. Very athletic around the mound. Uh, Jared Cozart able to throw out AJ one away. And some of the uh, first responders in their picture with uh, Dana Larson tonight. Yeah, a lot of folks on the field uh, during the pregame and it was a great, uh, great evening at the ballpark, and now we're getting the uh, all the auction items going. It's a fantastic night here at Rangers Ballpark. Glad you could all be a part of it. We want you to uh, continue to be part of the auction items as uh, they continue to be up for bid. Alex Rios had an infield single and an RBI, driving home the only Ranger run of the night. That back in the second inning. But Rios now 58. RBI. One ball, no strikes to count. Cozart back to it. Check swing and it's a hard foul the other way. Now Buzz, you'd mentioned that Cozart was a 38th round draft choice, and someone might say, well, why was a kid with this kind of talent a 38th round draft choice? But he was a very good high school pitcher. Didn't throw 95 or 96 miles an hour, but he had a great arm. Makings of a breaking ball. Fly ball to center field. Coming on Barnes, still coming, and makes the grab for out number two. It was a question of signability. He was drafted late because most teams didn't think they were going to be able to sign him. So the Phillies took him late in the draft when it doesn't really matter. And then they were able to sign him for a well above that place in the draft amount of money. You can't do that anymore. Draft is a little more strict in how you dole out the money, but that back then you could give whatever you wanted to a 38th round pick. And they gave him as much as they had to give him to sign him. Looks like it was a pretty good decision. Now trading him may not have been a great decision, but <laughs> signing him in the first place certainly was. First pitch to Moreland. Low and outside for ball one. Mitch called out on strikes. He got a big curveball on three and two that he watched into the glove. Cozart with just two strikeouts tonight. As Tom told you, not big strikeout totals yet, but uh, he's one of those guys that, as he figures things out, that strikeout total will go up. Now, Tube in short right field, able to throw out Moreland. And the Rangers down in order in the fourth. We have finished four here in Arlington. It's the Astros two, the Rangers one on Fox Sports Southwest. May 15th to be exact. And definitely the good folks in North Texas need your help. And welcome back to the ballpark. We have Sheriff George Deeds right here with us. Give us an update. You've been to the site. You've seen what's happening. What's the latest? 
I've been out there a number of times. It's come a long, long ways from that night, but it's still got a long ways to go. There's some homes that are almost rebuilt, but there's others that they haven't started on. So a lot of hard work that's been done, but a lot more to go. But they're all working really hard. A lot of church groups, a lot of civic groups are working hard to get out there and help those people, and we're going to get it done. It's still going to take some time, though. Uh, Sheriff DG hit it right on the head. There has been progress, but there is a lot of work to do. Yes, there is. There is a lot of work to do. There was a lot of people hurt that night, displaced, and so, yeah, we've got a ways to go. Right. Talk about the organizations that first responded. Well, we had all the fire departments locally, oh, sheriff's gosh. office. I had my guys out there, the ambulance service plus Metroplex ambulance service, MedStar and all, um, the hospital, the city of Granbury had their resources out there. We had an overwhelming amount of support that came out to help us that night. We had about 300 people respond to help. We had 250 people that we get, got out of the area that night in about an hour and a half. So it was pretty amazing what we did, but we still, you know, had some injuries. I believe we had 41 injuries and six fatalities, but it worked out, you know, as good as it ever could. And they've been working hard to rebuild ever since then. All right, Sheriff Deeds, appreciate your time. So the tornado victims in North Texas definitely need your help, and you can help. Log on to Fox Sports, foxsports.com and bid on those packages. Great packages. Check those out. Buzz? All right, Jim, thanks very much. The good folks down in Granbury, uh, we're with you on that. We know that it's uh, a devastation down there. It's been unbelievable, but they're going to recover. Jason Frazier has come out of the bullpen to take over. So Travis Blackley worked the first four, gave up uh, both runs on three hits, a walk and two strikeouts, and Frazier on for his 46th appearance of the year. Yeah, it was a pretty good outing for Travis Blackley. I'm sure he would like to have pitched one more inning, but everything considered, he did a good job. He got behind Matt Dominguez, grooved a fastball for a two-run homer. Other than that, he ball pretty well tonight. One step and probably maybe one more start and probably won't have any kind of a pitch limit, kind of entering toward the end of spring training, technically, mm -hmm. as far as pitch counts go. Yeah. In case you missed it before, the uh, roster move the Rangers made, uh, Alexi Ogando went on the 15-day disabled list to allow Travis Blackley to be activated. So Alexi uh, still getting some inflammation in that right shoulder, and the injections help, but uh, Rangers hope that by putting him on the disabled list and shutting him down basically for a few days and letting those injections take their, uh, take their time and healing it, that uh, he'll come back strong for the last five or six weeks of the season. Yeah, what could happen would be really nice in September if Neftali Felice continues to throw well. He could be another arm in the bullpen. Not sure what the plan for Alexi would be. But if it is to come back and pitch out of the bullpen, that'd be two nice arms to add to the bullpen in yep, September. Sure would. Hopefully, Alexi will be healthy and ready to do that. Be nice to see him come back for an inning or two throwing 97 miles an hour like we used to see. Stasi up the middle and there is his first major league hit. A ground ball right through the middle of the diamond. So Max Stasi will have that ball uh, for his mantle. He will throw it out of play. The first major league hit for the 22 year old Max Stasi. Jason Jason threw it, but he threw it to the wrong dugout. <laughs> he threw it into our dugout. Had to relay it back. So a night that uh, Max Stasi will never forget. A moment that he will never forget. You know, the veteran right-hander Jason Fraser. So one on, nobody out. A 2-1 Astros lead here in the top of the fifth inning. Brandon Barnes, the center fielder, popped out to second his first time up. Barnes with very good speed, and he takes strike one. So far, the third baseman had crept down the line a bit, uh, just in case Cole Porter wanted uh, Barnes to lay down a bunt. And Barnes again checking with third base coach Dave Tremblay to see if that might have changed. Frazier will look over his shoulder at first. Oh, one pitch. 
inside spun him around. It's one ball and one strike. Boy, there are not many quick at bats in this game. Nope. Very few outs being made in the first couple of pitches of an at bat. Everybody's seeing a lot of pitches. It feels that way anyway. Frazier now sets and a little tardy on the swing. And Barnes now down to the count one and two. Frazier usually likes to work quickly, but uh, he's kind of fallen into the the same tempo of everybody else in this game. It's not an over overwhelming uh, urge to get things done quickly tonight. Ranger right hander comes set. Stasi the lead from first. And the pitch swung on and missed. Got a high fastball. Throwing right on by Brandon Barnes. That is out number one. Now before uh, Marwin Gonzalez steps in, let's go down once again to Emily Jones. Em? Well, fellas, we know not everyone makes Jim Knox money, and not everyone can bid on these extravagant packages that we're offering, and they are all fabulous. However, for those who are on a little bit of a tighter budget, you can still help for $25.00. A donation gets you one of these T-shirts or one of these dog tags. Both are limited edition, but very cool. Say, OK Strong, TX Pride, we are one. And that's the slogan for this uh, entire fundraiser. We're so excited to be a part of it. But we realize that not everyone, like I said, can bid thousands of dollars on these packages. We want everyone who can, of course, to do that. But um, everyone can be a part of it by just donating $25. You get a memento like this. All the cool kids are wearing these T-shirts and dog tags, guys. I'll bring some up to you. And uh, over $13,000 already raised um, toward this wonderful, wonderful cause. And uh, all through the dog tags and the t-shirt sales also just straight cash donation if you can't afford twenty five dollars even every little bit helps so we want everyone to be a part of it and we know that um, that it will go to a great cause uh, via the Texas Rangers Baseball Foundation so over a thousand dollars already raised in cash but we need more like we keep saying um, find it wherever you can to give to people who need it so desperately and you know as we mentioned it's been a while since these events have taken place and it's easy for us to put them toward the back of our mind and that's why we're here tonight is to bring them to the forefront uh, and to remember all of the things that these people still need and that we can help with directly so we hope you'll be a part of it. All right Emily thank you. In the meantime the hidden ball trick worked. <laughs> As Max Stasi had beaten a throw that was errant by Jason Frazier off the glove of Andrews. Ian Kinsler backing it up, and Max Stasi was safe at second and then kind of wandered off the bag, and thinking that Frazier had the ball in hand. And Ian Kinsler said, Gotcha. Now Jason gets it in time. He throws off balance wild. It bounces off Elvis's glove to Ian. Stasi does have has no idea who's got the ball. I think he thinks Elvis has yeah. the ball because it went off Elvis's glove. He wanders off the bag and Ian comes up behind him and touches touches his back. Well, he got his first major league hit, but not many people fall victim to the hidden ball trick. <laughs> he'll he'll never forget that in his first game. Yeah, that goes right up there with the. Uh with the first major league hit on the same inning, the same time on the base pass. It's going to be scored a fielder's choice. That allows Gotten Gonzalez to get the first. An error on the throw to allow Stasi to get the second, and then an unassisted put out to Ian Kinsler. So two outs now, and back to the top of the order. Robbie Grossman, who turns around and hits from the left side against Frazier. Takes strike one. He's thinking, I can't believe that just happened. And the bad part about it, in the big leagues, it's all for posterity on uh, on digital backup well, somewhere. Good thing is he'll be able to watch it a few times tonight when he gets home to yeah. his hotel. Snap go to first and 
back just ahead of the throw. Marwin Gonzalez diving back in. I don't think anybody's talked to him yet. <laughs> Probably. Well, they're happy for him that he got yeah. his first major league hit. However, this is not much to much in the way of con consolation. They're all thinking I'm could have been me. Yep. I'm glad it wasn't me. On the inside corner, a strike. One and two now to Grossman. Well, Jason Frazier taking over here in the fifth inning. Started the inning by giving up the uh, base hit to Stasi. Got a strikeout of Brandon Barnes. And the Marwin Gonzalez play, the fielder's choice, an error, and uh, the put out at second. He's ahead of the count, one and two to Grossman. Got him swinging. A couple of strikeouts in the inning. A hit and one left for the Astros. Halfway through the ballgame, Houston two and the Rangers one. Rangers baseball as we've been telling you benefit 2013 and there are a lot of Fox Sports items on our big board behind me that you could bid on. You could go to the Fox Sports NFL Sunday visit. What a great deal that is. Meet Terry, Howie, Kurt, Jimmy, Michael and watch the game from the Fox Sports VIP room. Don't forget there's a new Fox Sports network. It's FS1 and the new show there is called Fox Sports Live. Another experience for two people. You stay at the Omni. You meet and go behind the scenes with all the people from Fox Sports Live. There's also a trip to New York for The Crowd Goes Wild. That's the new Regis Philbin show that's on Fox on FS1. So lots of great Fox items still available. FoxSportsSouthwest.com is where you go to bid. Get this. We have already raised about $70,000 worth of bids and pushing $14,000 in cash and the dog tag and shirt sales. So we're at about $84,000, $85,000 already. We're halfway through the ballgame. Let's keep it going. We want to build it up and get it up into six figures real soon, guys. Back to you. All right, John, thank you. Some great auction items. And as John said, uh, go to FoxSportsSouthwest.com, and you can view all that, make your bids right online right there. Jerickson Profar he is leading off the Ranger fifth inning. Jared Cozart misses low and inside, and the count goes to three and one. Yeah, a little more on that. Uh, crowd goes wild. The Regis show. Airfare for Tudor, New York. Two nights stay in a hotel in the Big Apple, and then access to the crowd goes wild set. Ball four. Matt Profar draws the leadoff walk. Well, Jerickson aboard to start the inning. 
And David Murphy now will come up. And before Murph steps in, let's take time for a Mazda game break. Once again, here's Dana Larson. All right, Dana. David Murphy, a ground ball to second, his first time to the plate. Bozart missing outside. One ball and no strikes. Murphy, 223 with the average. We got Jurich and Profar at first. Nobody out. Rangers trailing two to one. We play in the bottom of the fifth inning. And a fastball on the outside corner, belt high. Well, folks, this September, Metro PCS is giving your child a chance to take outfielder David Murphy to school. Log on to MetroPCSTakeAPlayer.com for your chance to win. Metro PCS, wireless for all. One ball, one strike. Ozark went with the big hook that uh, didn't hook. It's two and one. Profar started the inning off by uh, coaxing a walk out of Cozart. His second walk of the evening. And David Murphy now in a hitter's count at two and one. Right-hander sets. And Murphy chops it foul to even the count. A strange year for David Murphy, but he's still got uh, about 37 games left. See if he can't put up some numbers even close to what he's been able to do in the past. August and September have really been his months. He hammers this from the right field. It's staying up in the air, though. Coming on hose, he's going to throw behind Profar. And he airmailed uh, Chris Carter. He did make the catch for out number one as Murphy lined to right. Uh, tough luck for David right there. He hit that ball right on the button. Couldn't find a hole with it. Hit right at the right fielder. Breaking ball stayed up. Good swing. Hit it well. Hit it too well. Carried all the way to the right fielder. A little bit high with the throw, but that's why you back up those throws. Castro back there to take care. We saw him. L.J. Ho is on court to throw in Houston. Uh, went into the into the. <laughs> That's seats. the one that was halfway between third and yeah, second uh, between third and home. Right. There goes Profar. The pitch is outside. The throw is high, but they got him anyway. Well, I don't know if that was a hit and run or not. Uh, it looked like Profar looked back on his way down there. Yeah, I I don't know either, Buzz. I would think it was a hit and run though. Although the way Martin went after the pitch, he showed no inclination that he was going yep. to swing at it. Cozart struggling to throw strikes. Gets an out on the bases will help his pitch count. The base is empty now, two away. And the pitch is inside. Two and nothing to Leonis Martin. Leonis, a ground ball back to the mound. He's also grounded out to second. And a fastball belt high outside corner. Two and one now. Martin four for eight in his last couple of ball games. Fouls that next pitch off to even the count. Jared Cozart approaching the 90 pitch level. Right hander agrees to a sign in the 2 2 pitch. Got him swinging. Well, Martin down on strikes. What looked promising turns into a 1 2 3 inning. We're going to the sixth. It's the Astros 2, the Rangers 1 on Fox Sports Southwest.
Very active on that day. And just take us back to what it was like um, when those storms hit and you all were called into action. Uh, honestly, uh, you know, nothing was expected of that day. You figured a few thunderstorms here and there. We were about to head out of town and actually go to a rescue class, and all of a sudden, everything just kind of collapsed on itself, and the worst possible thing that could have happened happened, and it, the devastation that it took on the communities around us, to the town of El Reno itself, to the stockyards out that we cover and everything, it just, it was a completely different world. I mean, just, chaos and havoc everywhere and the, the storms were so widespread just talk about that so many smaller communities affected that maybe people haven't heard about uh yeah just to the south of us we have a town called union city and pretty much uh the highway between us and them where all the houses and farmhouses and everything that they take the majority of the hits and they're the ones that got complete completely totaled out uh Honestly, it was it was crazy with all the storms that happened. You had the huge one, and then we thought it was all clear to move in and help out, and then we had a lot of different trucks just kind of get t caught in the mixture of all the little tornadoes and little storms that were moving in and out, and it was it was a crazy, awesome experience. So we, we see, or, or it's been out of our mind for, for a little while now because some time has passed, but you see it on a daily basis, the rebuilding that needs to take place uh, and the funds that are needed. So it's important for us which is why we're doing this tonight, to bring it back into focus. Can you just speak to that, uh, the rebuilding that still needs to be done all around your area? Yes, ma'am. Uh, houses, everything, it's going to take more than just, you know, a few months to rebuild, to take care of everything, to get everything out and replace it all. Uh, there's, I mean, there's there's more than just houses there. There's, there's lost memories. There's family heirlooms that will never be replaced, and it's one of those things just support from the community, from the town itself, from everyone that it's going to have to take years and maybe even longer than that to replace everything. Not just in El Reno, but in, you know, Moore, Shawnee, Kearney, all the towns that got affected. It's going to, it's going to take a lot more than just a little bit of time. Carol Thompson, thank you so much for your time. Uh, as he mentioned, it's going to take time. It also takes money. Uh, some things we can replace, others we can't, but let's do our part to help out uh, in each and every way possible. We mentioned so many different ways to help. You can bid on the big packages with just a $25 donation. Of course, you can get the T-shirt or the dog tag. Um, and then also, too, even if you can't afford $25, any little bit helps. So we would appreciate uh, any and all. There you see the numbers uh, of the amount raised so far. But I know as a Rangers fan base, this is a generous fan base. It is a supportive fan base. I know we can do better. So keep those donations coming in. Keep bidding on the packages. And, of course, um, just keep those donations coming, guys. All right, Em, thank you very much. Uh, great stories. and Boy, it's, uh, you know, it's, until you've been touched by something like that, I guess it's hard to really understand it. But when you hear stories of folks that lived it and are still living it, uh, it kind of brings it back to, back to reality for you. Now, L.J. Ho is grounded out to start this sixth inning for the Astros. And Jose Altuve facing Jason Fraser. Fraser working his second inning here tonight. Fires a strike. And is ahead of the count. 0-2 to Altuve. Yeah, a lot of strikes for Jason. 18 out of 23 pitches have been strikes. Jason had a couple of strikeouts in the fifth inning. Gave up a hit, but no damage done. The 0-2 is on the way. Now, Duve, like most of the Astros hitters, very aggressive. And uh, you can use that against him. You can get ahead in the count. Just out of the strike zone on a, a pitch or two and see if he can get it to offer. Jason Frazier says yep to that sign. Chopper in the hole. Yeah, tough play for Andrews. The throw and he got it. Oh, what a play by Elvis Andrews. He had one chance. And that was to make that off-balance throw going away from first base with the body. And he put it right there. Yep, does that play very well. We see it. On a fairly regular basis, going in the hole, coming up front. Sometimes he jumps, sometimes he plants his foot. That time he just had to catch it on the run and throw it as quickly as possible. And somehow, going in that direction, he was able to do it accurately and just nip Altuve at first base. 
Uh, Ron Washington out to the mound, and uh, that's going to do it for Jason Frazier. Like the left-hander Neil Cox will be asked to come on to face Jason Castro. So a nice job by Frazier to go an inning in two-thirds with no damage done. Get a pitching change underway. We'll take a timeout. Be right back to Rangers Ballpark in Arlington after this in a 2-1 ball game. down 2 to 1 here in the top of the 6th inning. Rangers Ballpark in Arlington. Time to give you more details on one of these one of a kind packages as we of course are doing our best to help raise funds uh, to those who suffered devastating losses of those tornadoes in North Texas and of course Oklahoma and uh, for those in Oklahoma this one uh, will hit right at home. How about a night with the thunder? This is a tremendous experience, a game night experience at Chesapeake Arena. VIP package including six seats in a terrace suite at a home game at the arena. You get to see the pregame warm-ups and enjoy a buffet dinner to go along with a parking pass and we know Kevin Durant and a number of uh, the uh, members of the Thunder team and the front office have been out there helping as well donating a tremendous amount of funds uh, to help in the recovery process up there and so maybe this will be a way uh, for Thunder fans uh, to get out and enjoy a night as well guys. All right Dana thank you. That's a nice package that's put together if you happen to be a Thunder fan get some Oklahoma City basketball. Now Neil Cotts on for his 40th appearance of the year. Neil facing Jason Castro, one and one the count. Fouled out of play to the left. Two one Houston. Rangers uh, have been out hit four to three tonight. Castro scoring both of their runs. Back in the second inning on Matt Dominguez, two run home run. Neil Cox, the third Ranger pitcher of the night, worked three nights ago against Seattle. And the next pitch is fouled back also. Ranger bullpen this year, we've talked about how. Good it has been of late, but uh, you know you go over the entire season. They have the third lowest ERA in the American League, 3.01. So it's not just lately; they have been terrific lately. But, uh, the entire year they have been really good. It's been a changing cast of characters at times. But uh, Neil Koch came on and uh, really picked up some slack. Tanner Shepherds has been there. Joaquin Soria coming off the. Uh, Disabled list has made a big difference, and Jason Frazier's hit his stride and pitched very well. Still two and two, the count to Castro.
Cots back to the plate. Got him swinging. Good breaking ball. Castro retired, and Cots has a strikeout to end the sixth inning. After five and a half, it remains the Astros two. The Rangers one on Fox Sports Southwest. Inning brought to you by Sonic. Tonight's jackpot is worth $900 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. Tonight, the Rangers are hitting for Pam Park from Amarillo. And if uh, the Rangers hit a grand slam this inning, Pam Park from Amarillo will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. And the moon over Arlington. Yeah, that's a good omen for the... Uh, Rangers here in this Sonic Slam inning. The Rangers trail two to one. Elvis Andrews will start things off. It'll be Andrews, Kinsler, and Beltre, the first three, to do the swinging against Jared Cozart, who has been very good in the first five innings. Allowed just one run on the three hits, and that has been it. He has walked three, but Rangers uh, check that he's walked two. Rangers not been able to cash those in. Elvis has one of those two walks. 0 for 1 officially tonight. Big breaking ball, and that just touches the outside corner. It's nothing in two. Goes out to the wind. And a chopper foul on the curveball. Now, the one ball that looked like it might put the Rangers ahead was that ball that. Adrian Beltre hit to end the third inning. He'll line drive right to the 377 sign in front of the Ranger bullpen. It sounded and looked like he hit it hard enough to be a home run. Ball just didn't carry. And Hose was able to run it down right in front of the wall. Some plenty of times in this ballpark where that, ex that exact ball would have sailed right over the bullpen pitchers. Oh, yeah. There. Outside, one ball and two strikes. Yeah, some nights there that ball oh, had a chance to go off the facing in the second deck. <laughs> Get that jet stream. Well, we have just we just haven't had that jet stream blowing uh, much this year. I don't know whether it's the construction behind home plate or what's happened. No, it was fouls and out of play to the right. The count remains one and two. Well, Cozart approaching uh, the hundred pitch mark. Astros have not uh, allowed him to. Venture too far past that mark, although he did throw 115 pitches in his start against Oakland back in the, his second major league start back in the last week in July. Another chopper foul. Count remains one and two to Elvis. Andrews hitting at 256 as he faces Cozart 
leading off the Rangers sixth inning. Rangers 12 and 2 this year against the Astros. They have won the last six against their uh, state mates in the dirt. Well out in front of home plate. The count is two and two. Go back even further. Rangers have won 16 of the last 18 beginning last May, a year ago, May. And here at the ballpark, now about 20 and 8 against the Astros since the start of 2005. Another foul ball. So Elvis so he's throwing a lot. tough. Yeah, he's throwing a lot of breaking balls. Elvis is following every one of them off. So this is a long at bat. Four, about ninth, ninth pitch coming up. Eight or nine pitches. Yep, you are correct on the nine. Elvis ready to work. Cozart staring in for the sign has the one he wants. And a chopper by the mound. Shortstop Gonzalez. Quick throw. And Andrews retired after a nine pitch at bat. One away for Ian Kinsler. Hey, let's go over to say hello to Jim Knox again, Jim. All right, Buzz, appreciate it. How about another auction item to bid on? Go to FoxSportsSouthwest.com, and it's the TCU game day experience with the Fox Sports Southwest girls, Amy and Liddy. You can't get better, much better than that. Tell us what will happen this day, girls. This is against SMU, I believe. It is. It's a TCU-SMU game. So if you're a TCU or SMU fan or just a football fan, come hang out with us. You can tailgate with, with us before the game, and you get four tickets to watch the TCU game. And there's much more. We actually got to do this last year, and there was four fans that got to come along, and we had so much fun. We got the, we let them inter interview the fans um, and just hang out and experience what a tailgate is. And let me tell you, TCU knows how to tailgate. They do. Um, they also get the four tickets to the game and an autograph authentic jersey by uh, head coach Gary Patterson. You can't get better than that. Authentic TCU jersey by head coach Gary Patterson. Tailgate with the Fox Sports Southwest girls. Tickets to the game. That's not TCU against some powder puff team. It's TCU against SMU. Big crosstown rival right there. You hang out with the girls. Go to FoxSportsSouthwest.com. FoxSportsSouthwest.com. Plenty of great packages. This would be an outstanding one. Check that out. Buzz? All right, Jen. Thanks, Again, you got me sold. Popping that stuff up there. I'm ready to buy it all. Ready to bid on it all. Ian Kinsler, the hitter, and the count is two balls and a strike. Gozart back to him. And the breaking ball hangs high. Well, he's at uh, 102 pitches right now. No one warming up in the bullpen. Generally, just in case he can't get that next out or get out of this inning, he'd have someone warmed up. I think they're going to start someone warming up pretty soon. Yeah, there's some people stirring around out there a little bit. Uh, Bull Porter trying to stay with the hot hand here. And a fastball fills the count out. So Kinsler with one out trying to get aboard. Adrian Belter, the Ranger cleanup hitter, is waiting in the on deck circle. Gozart has the signing once into the line, the payoff pitch. Inside ball four, and Kinsler is aboard. Only in, been aboard the last two times up. And he'll bring up Beltre now, who's hit the ball hard twice against Kozar. Once lining a double off the wall in left field. And then last time up in the third, driving one to the 377 mark, right in front of the Ranger bullpen. That one tracked down by LJ Hose out there. Here, one on and one out in the Rangers sixth inning. First pitch is a fastball right down through there. Double-barreled action. Josh Zai, the uh, right-hander, is throwing. Kevin Chapman, the left-hander. They're getting loose in support of Jared Cozart here in the sixth. And if you're Cozart, I'm not sure you'd have a real high comfort level uh, seeing what the bullpen has done lately for the Astros. It has not been real good. Pitch in the dirt. Oh, a nice stop there by Castro. 
able to keep that right near home plate and prevent Ian Kinsler from going to second. Ian checking across the diamond with Gary Pettis, the Ranger third base coach. I would imagine the uh, stay sign has been put on for Kinsler with Beltre up there. Yeah, with Beltre up there and especially the way that the Rangers have seen Jason Castro throw. I think twice. One and one. There goes Kinsler and the breaking ball is in high in the air to right field. Moving back his hose way back. Hose was going back like it was a routine fly ball, and that carried into the home run court. And Adrian Beltre has turned the game around. The Rangers lead it three to two. Yeah, it, no buzz. It looked like he hit that ball pretty well, but based on the one he hit the last time up that didn't go out to the 377 sign, you just kind of make the assumption that that's going to be caught around the warning track. And that one just shot right out of here. I, I thought he hit the other one harder. Yeah, I did too. I should have made that assumption. Well, we've got a winner in the uh, Sonic Slam inning. Ham Park from Amarillo. $900 and dinner for two coming to you. Courtesy of Sonic. So Adrian Beltre is 26th home run of the year. And he has turned this thing around here in the sixth inning. How about the three at bats for Adrian tonight? Smoked a double off the left field wall, the home run. And one line shot caught right before it went into the Ranger bullpen. Swing and a miss by Pierzynski. Boy, that's the old hanging curveball right there. That might be the only one he's thrown up there. Yeah. Most of the ones that have missed tonight have been down in the dirt. And a lot of guys, most guys, can't hit that pitch out of the ballpark, but Adrian obviously didn't have any problem hitting it out. Last ball outside. Matt Garza saying, yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> the kids pitched a great game tonight. Yeah. You, know, it's, uh, you feel bad for him, that one bad pitch, and he made it to the wrong guy. Yeah, timing is everything, and uh, the timing with Beltre up there. You know, he's had, Elk Adrian's had three great at bats tonight off Cozart. Hit, hit the ball hard all three times. I'm not so certain that wasn't the least hard hit of the three, the one that went out. Yeah. Yeah. And I know the one he lined off the left field wall for a double was hit hard, and that, that ball that he drove to the alley for an out his second time up was hit hard. Brzezinski rifles one to center, but that's hanging up as Barnes comes on and has to make a shoestring catch. Looked like he might have had a knuckleball coming at him. He stays with it for out number two. How about the uh, hit speed, Tom? What do you think it is off Belt um, I'd say 99. 95. 95. I, 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 I'm probably a little high on that one. I just didn't want to cheat Adrian. I didn't <laughs> want to say too low. And he deserves all the respect in the world. 26th home run, 78 RBI. And a hopper off of uh, Chris Carter, but he will recover. And Tag first. Alex Rios is out. That'll do it for the Rangers. But Adrian Beltre turns the game around with a two-run home run. Ian Kinsler scores in front of him. We'll go to the seventh. It's now the Rangers three, the Astros two.
one swing of Adrian's Beltre's bat, and the Rangers take the lead three to two. And meanwhile, in our uh, auctions tonight, total amount raised so far up over a hundred thousand dollars, one hundred nine thousand. High bid so far on the packages. The Cowboys VIP experience, eighty four hundred dollars. So keep the bids coming, folks. We've got plenty of time left if you want to. Take advantage of any of those. Go to FoxSportsSouthwest.com and view all the packages, 24 of them, that you can bid on. So Neil Kotz back to the hill now with a one-run lead. He's facing Chris Carter, who has walked and struck out. And Kotz heating him up, up and in. It is nothing and two. It'll be Carter, Dominguez, and Stasi, the first three to... Swing against Neil Cox. Couldn't get Carter to go up out of the strike zone. It's one and two now. Hits are even at four in tonight's game. Each team with a two run home run. One two pitch. Call strike three. Fastball outside corner came back a little bit. And Chris Carter. Caught window shopping. Yeah, Chris has a pretty good eye at the plate. He thought that ball was going to be a little bit outside, I think. You can see the glove right there, and he actually comes back and catches all of the plate. You're just fooled by the movement on that pitch because yeah. it was definitely a strike. And a little cutting action, it looked like. Yep. From Neil Kotz. So Kotz has struck out both Astros he has faced. Castro to end the sixth, and now Carter to start the seventh. And it brings up Matt Dominguez, who had the uh, two-run home run for the Astros in the second inning. Now Dominguez now a 239 hitter. Cots with a 1-0. Drops the breaking ball in. And that evens things at 1-1. One and one. And a fastball right down through there. One ball and two strikes. Dominguez, one of the hotter Astros hitters. He now has a five-game hitting streak. And he has hit almost 400 on their road trip, which now has spans to eight games. Chops that pitch foul. Profar will make a, a new friend in the first row. For Dominguez, the home run here tonight is third on this road trip. The group having a lot of ice cream there in the front row. <laughs> Cots again with a one-two pitch. Got him swinging. Well, a good hard breaking ball down and in. And Neil Cox has got it going tonight. Yeah, three he's consecutive sharp. Strikeout. He's sharp tonight. 16 pitches, 12 strikes. Fastball one right after the other, 92 miles an hour, and that hard cutter slider, 88, 89 miles an hour, been really sharp. And let's go over to John Radigan. John? Yeah, standing in front of the big board with all of our live auction items, and we've got another great one. We want to point you out the Dallas Mavericks VIP game experience. 17 guests get to attend this game in a Mavs luxury suite and participation for two at Mavs Fantasy Camp. You might not have even known they had that, but how about Nolan talking earlier about fantasy camp? Maybe you could be a part of a story like that. Maybe someday Dirk Nowitzki will be sitting around talking about you at fantasy camp from the bid you make tonight. So um, bid it up. It's a fantasy camp, and 17 people get to go to a Mavs game as we raise money for the victims of the tornadoes in Oklahoma and North Texas. Guys, back up to you. All right, John, thanks. That's great stuff. And now think about it. Go to a Mavs fantasy camp. Have Dirk block a shot. One of your shots. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a story of a lifetime for you. A ball and two strikes. Max Stasi, the hitter. And he fouls it away to the right off of Neil Cotts. Stasi, last time up, his first major league hit. And a sharp grounder right through the middle off of Jason Fraser. And he is one for two tonight. Cott sets again. And he's going to be two for three as he loops one to right field. Well, Stasi got jammed and uh, looped it out of the reach of Ian Kinsler. He is aboard for the second time. 
It'll bring up Brandon Barnes with two away. Well, he's thinking the last thing I'm going to do here is get picked off. <laughs> Got to play at second. He's asking Dave Clark over there, the first base coach, where's the ball? Who's got the ball? Who has the ball? The Brandon Barnes stepping in, 0 for 2 tonight. He's popped out and struck out. Now time called. A.J. Brzezinski pointing to the Ranger dugout about something. Looks like he might have a bad lace on his uh, on his glove. First pitch to Barnes inside for ball one. Barnes a 231 hitter. He was checking with Dave Tremblay, the third base coach. Stasi, Stasi the runner at first, a catcher by trade, so you would assume not blazing speed. Looper up the middle to Kinsler, and he will make the throw to first. That will do it. So a couple of jam jobs, one a hit, and the last one an out. One left on a hit. It's stretch time in Arlington. Rangers three, Astros two on Fox Sports Southwest. by a score of three to two as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Joined now by the Fernandez family, and we've got the family of five, but we've got one spokesperson. And Amanda, you've got quite a story to tell. And just take us back to that day, you all from Granbury, Texas, and uh, hit hard by the tornado there recently. Yes, and um, we were actually just um, relaxing and watching TV, and um, we saw the warnings, but we didn't really think that it was going to hit us. And um, and then we lost power. We heard the sirens, and um, we grabbed the kids, and we just hunkered down in the closet. And um, it was, you know, the house was rocking and shaking, and it was, um, it was pretty scary. It's the scariest thing I've ever had to go through. And um, all we could do was pray hard. We prayed really, really hard, and uh, we came out alive, luckily, because um, there was a lot of people around us that was hurt. Some people died, but um, we survived, and. Our house was um, pretty much totaled, but um, the most important thing was that we were okay. And um, I hate that we lost our house, but you know we'll be able to rebuild it. And um, but you know the most important thing is that we were all okay, and we can just replace our belongings. And um, so. Absolutely. These three faces, the most important thing right there, as you mentioned, to make it through. But your home was destroyed. Just talk about the outpouring of support that you've seen, uh, not only from within your community, but outside of your community, to help you rebuild in the very spot where your home was. Um, our church, Stonewater, has helped a lot as far as um, um, meeting our needs, and our needs are getting met. And, you know, it's just amazing what people um, are willing to give as far as their time. And it's just uh, we have an abundance of um, people that are reaching out to us. And without that, we wouldn't have been able to, um, you know, replace what we had lost. 
And so many of you, uh, so fortunate to have received that help, but so many people haven't. Just talk about an event like tonight and how important it is to help those who haven't gotten the assistance that you all have. Oh, definitely. If there's people out there that are doing without because of the tornado, then it's very important to reach out to them, you know, with your time, um, physical labor, whatever it is that you can do, because it's really, really hard. I mean, look at, look, like a face like this, how can you say no? Can you smile, big one? Can you say go Rangers? Okay, or just a smile. A smile works just as good. But look into that camera and smile real big. Look at that. How can you say no to that face? Please call. Please go to the website. Donate. Uh, it is for a great cause. The Hernandez family, thank you so much for your time. We're glad you're on your way to recovery, guys. Oh, thanks, Emily. Really great stuff, man. That, uh, that really brings it down to the personal level. That's why we encourage all of you to get involved with this and support the Tornado Relief Fund that the auction is going on tonight about. Well, two outs here in the Rangers' seventh inning, and with the left-hander Kevin Chapman on, Ron Washington has gone to his bench, and uh, Craig Gentry is pinch hitting for David Murphy. David Murphy retires 0 for 2 tonight, and uh, Gentry off the bench, hitting at 248. And the Ranger pinch hitting core has really done yeoman work in the last uh, several weeks. And Kevin Chapman, the uh, second pitcher tonight, taking over for Jared Kosart. His eighth appearance, Rangers saw him uh, down in Houston last week. Off speed, and that's a bit outside to Gentry. Greg with a home run, 16 driven in. Chapman set, back to the plate. Inside, three balls and a strike. And Tanner Shepherds is loose and uh, ready, I would say, in the Ranger bullpen. Figures that uh, he might come in to pitch the eighth inning. 3-1 pitch. Chop foul, and the count is now full. Gentry in his last five pinch hitting appearances has reached base safely in four of them. He's had uh, two hits and two walks, so he's been a force coming off the bench. Trying to reach here with two outs in the seventh inning. Time call. If Gentry uh, continues this inning, he got the top of the order, and they want a smart team waiting next. Chapman with a 3-2. We'll try it again. There's Leonis. Nolan and uh, Ruth Ryan there in the front row. Their normal seats. Chapman looking into Jason Castro, the left-hander sets. Payoff pitch. High in the air down the right field line. Over to make the play is Hose, and just in foul territory, L.J. Hose puts it away. Rangers gone in order. We have finished seven tonight. It's the Rangers three, the Astros two on Fox Sports Southwest.
lead. We go to the top of the eighth inning, and our throwing right-hander Tanner Shepherds out of the Ranger bullpen takes over for Neil Cox. Shepherds coming out here facing the number nine man to start things off. There are the numbers for Tanner this year. Yep, nice numbers they are. Trying to hold that one run lead. Rangers really had to work against Jared Kosart tonight. He had great stuff. They battled and finally got the big home run by Adrian Beltre to take the lead. First ball swing and Gonzalez taps one that uh, Moreland can't get to before it goes into foul territory. And we'll come back and try it at 0 and 1. Tanner Shepherds last worked here uh, three nights ago, actually four nights ago. Gave up a run on the home run to uh, Justin Smoke in the ninth inning, that uh, three to one Rangers loss. Off the end of the bat, and that's fouled the other way. And the count moves to nothing and two. Marwin Gonzalez tonight has fly to center and he is grounded into a fielder's choice. Pops this one up foul territory pro far over to take a look but that's seven or eight rows back. And we'll come back and try it again. Gonzalez a 227 hitter. A switch hitter up there from that left side. Ranger infield playing him just about straight away. The outfield, though, very shallow and around to the left. Now one thing you can be sure of, pretty sure of, he probably is not going to walk. He's only walked five times, been up 179 times. Laid off the breaking ball, and the count is even now at two and two. Gonzalez, of course, the uh, guy who broke up. Hugh Darvish has attempted a perfect game on the second game of the uh, regular season this year. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Line drive, Profar leaning to his left. Captures it and goes to the dirt. Oh, tough at bat right there for Marvin Marwin Gonzalez. He hit a tailing 97 mile an hour fastball on a line. Fortunately, Jerickson was able to get his glove on it. And let's go to Jim Knox again. Jim, here I am. What are you doing? Oh, I haven't you're been everywhere. Here like in 10 years. This is nice up here. <laughs> FoxSportsSouthwest.com. The auction items continue. I want to just push one item, and I think this is the best one on the whole auction block, and that is the Fox Southwest behind the scenes experience. Ranger yep. truck. Those guys in the truck. No one's ever allowed in there. Nope. I'm, they kick me out every time I go in. You get to see how that's broadcast. Because <laughs> you're trying then to you, press all the buttons in there. Yeah, they won't want me anywhere around that. Then you got up here. You get up here with the best play-by-play -play guys in the business. Steve Busby and Tom Grieve get to see how it's done. They got a little air conditioning up here. Sometimes the cookie lady sends up treats, Sometimes. right? Sometimes. We'll dish out some cookies up here. You get to meet all the camera guys, Buzz and Tom. You can't get anything better than this. Log on to FoxSportsSouthwest.com. Get those bids up. Help out a great cause. Way to go. Okay, I'm going to get back in the stands. And if you get tired up here, you can join me in the stands. Take a lap around the stadium. Find and talk to some <laughs> then of those great really Ranger be fans. You can't beat it. See ya. <laughs> He's everywhere. Unbelievable. You now Tanner Shepherds fires a strike. That runs the count full now to Robbie Grossman. Grossman one for three tonight. One out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. The top of the eighth inning, excuse me. Brown ball. Tough one for Kinsler. Off balance throw, not in time. Ian did all he could, just couldn't get enough on the throw. And Grossman getting down that line in a hurry, able to beat it out. He just had too far to run, and he was going too fast away from the bag to be able to make the play. Made a great effort, though. You can see all the ground that he covers. And then the attempt to throw it back against his body like that. He actually got something on the throw, too. But Grossman is a decent runner. And he was able to beat it out. Didn't get him, but it was a nice play. Well, the sixth hit of the night for the Astros. They have out hit the Rangers six to four. Grossman with his second safety of the evening. And LJ Hose, the right fielder. There goes Grossman. The pitch is fouled away. 
Chopper at home plate. We'll come back and try it again. Looks like the hit and run put on by Bo Porter. Well, Grossman back to first. Bo Porter's seen his Astro Club really break out the stolen bases, a primary weapon here in the line. Second half of the season. They've stolen 88 for the year. 88 out of 129. Not a great percentage, but they are running uh, with much more frequency. Altuve remains the team leader. He has 30. LJ Hoes. Three ground outs tonight. Once into a double play. A little looper to right. Easy play for Alex Rios out there. That is out number two. No Grossman stays at first. And with Jose Altuve coming up. Our at t Twitter poll, we asked you, who would you most like to meet? And the, the choices were... Uh, Tom and I, along with Jim Knox, or Nolan Ryan, or the Fox team, NFL team, didn't draw a lot of respect. Uh, didn't have to, it's time we see uh, Terry Brash up to get on him about that. Or Regis Philbin, who got no respect. Well, they kept it in the Ranger family, yep. that's for sure. Coming into second to Nolan Ryan is that's not, not all that bad. bad a deal. Nope. Nope. No surprise there. Here's Jose Altuve. One ball, no strikes. Altuve, a fly ball to center field. Also lined to short and grounded to short. Altuve hitting a 276. Shepherds okays the sign and comes set. Ground ball foul outside first. Got to be careful with Altuve. He does have a little bit of pop. And four home runs this year. And playing at Minute Maid Park, though, is uh, a definite advantage for a guy like Altuve. Got that uh, Crawford boxes down the left field line and a short wall and right. Altuve against Shepherds, two out of four in his career. Tanner ready, a check of first. Very hot. And the count is two and one. Shepard's trying to maintain this 3-2 Ranger lead here in the eighth inning. Got Grossman at first with two outs, a 2-1 count to Altuve. Slowly hit out to Kinsler. On to first base, and that will do it. Oh, nice job by Tanner Shepard. Gives up the base hit, but strands the runner. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Rangers three, Astros two on Fox Sports Southwest.
our Rangers fans and this Rangers nation. We have raised over a half million dollars in three years of doing these telethons, 127,000 so far. And we're not done yet. We plan to raise more than that for this tornado relief tonight. But uh, so far, over a half million dollars raised by Fox Sports Southwest and the Texas Rangers Baseball Foundation. Let's get over to Emily with a special guest. John, thank you. A representative from one of the communities that were helping Shawnee, Oklahoma. This is John Lowry. And, John, uh, I understand, thankfully, your family not in the home when the tornado hit back in May, but you returned home to find utter de devastation. That's right. We, uh, we were actually at a graduation party for myself, and we came back from uh, Shawnee. And as we got closer and closer to home, uh, you could tell trees were down, power lines everywhere. Finally, when we got um, about a mile away from my driveway, there were fire trucks, police, first responders everywhere trying to block the way. But they let us through, and uh, thankfully the house was still standing, but it was pretty badly damaged. So what's that like when you come upon a, a scene like that? So thankful that you weren't there, but also, too, so heartbroken by the loss. It's almost surreal. Growing up in Oklahoma, you know, you learn to deal with tornadoes. They're just a fact of life. But when it actually happens to you and your family, it's really just, it's heartbreaking and devastating. We can't stress enough just the amount of work that needs to be done and the amount of funds that it's going to take to do it. Like we've mentioned all night, those of you that we've talked to, you see it every day. So give us, you know, just a reminder of how important this is. Absolutely. I mean, you know, give as much as you can. We've had so much help uh, personally from my family. We've had it from as far away as Michigan, as far away as Australia. We've had crews from all over the country just trying to give their best for... Uh... Definitely a chance for us to give back, a chance for us to help uh, families like John's and so many that were affected not only uh, here in North Texas, but also to our friends north of the border in Oklahoma. So please, please, please do what you can. We've just got an inning left. Uh, we'll go a little bit after the game, but it's important to get your donations in, uh, however small or large they may be, um, because it is for such a great cause, guys. All right, Emily, thank you very much. Well, in the meantime, uh, Leonis Martin popped out, and that's going to do it for Kevin Chapman as Bo Porter is out to the mound to make a pitching change. We'll be back right after this. was growing and getting bigger and I remember thinking another F5. You know last time I was in one I thought I will be underground. I'm never going to ride it out again in my bathtub you know and and I thought I can't do that. I don't have that choice because I'm responsible for all these kids. I promised these parents that I would keep them safe. So, <laughs> um, that's a huge responsibility because we do that every day. We bring them in, you have 675 kids. We bring in and we promise them we're going to feed them and teach them and we'll send them home to you. So I pray, you know, God, I 
I don't know that it's still so raw. <laughs> um, I know if I have the faith of a mustard seed, we can move mountains and we can do impossible things. So I'm praying that you will please protect everyone in this building, our teachers, our students, the families, pets, you know, because I can't do it by myself. The second grade teacher that was out there watching was like, I think we need to move them to the, the bathroom instead of this interior wall. So they got all of them into the bathroom. Um, she had the girls and she got her sixth grade son who, um, and put him in there with the boys and said, you've got to be brave and watch over these, our babies. You know, and he had to grow up and be a man, you know, as a 12 year old. And he did it, he's great, you know. Um. Well, it's amazing to have people like that uh, that are so conscientious and so brave to watch over your kids. I and mean, it was a terrible tragedy, but well, it could have been a lot worse if uh, people like that hadn't been involved. And we can get involved with uh, helping recover from that devastation. All tonight, uh, FoxSportsSouthwest.com and bid on the packages available or even buy a t-shirt or some dog tags. Help out. Ian Kinsler banging a ball to left field for a base hit. So back-to-back -back singles. That's how the Rangers greet Josh Zayed here in the eighth inning. He's thrown two pitches and they've both been ripped into left field. And now you've got Adrian Beltre coming up. Josh Zayed's numbers on the season, eight and two-thirds. That's some strikeouts. Giving up a couple of home runs. Well, he's trying to get a little bit of an insurance here for Joe Nathan. Joe warming up. Coming in trying to get his 37th save. Now Zayed, part of that uh, deal that sent Hunter Pence to the Phillies, along with Jared Kozar coming over. Saw Joe Nathan. He's uh, getting ready. And getting ready to work the bottom or the top of the ninth inning if unless the Rangers uh, go completely nuts here with one out. The two on. Adrian Beltre, a big night, a double, a two-run home run. He has scored two runs. And Zide throws the breaking ball off the outside corner. For the AT&T Ubers rewind tonight. Adrian Beltre in a 2-1 deficit game. Bangs it to right field and carries out of the ballpark. Ian Kinsler aboard, and that turned the entire game around and made it a 3-2 Ranger lead. And that's where we stand here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Andrus at second, Kinsler at first. And Beltre lines one just foul down the third baseline. Just out and ahead of it. Enough to hook it foul by you know, a matter of a couple of feet. And if it's fair and gets down in the corner with Ian at first base, it's probably two runs. The 0 and 2, the count to Beltre. Adrian hitting at 327 as of this at bat against Josh Zide. Right hander sets. There go the runners. The pitch swung on and missed, and it'll be a double stolen base for Andrews and Kinsler on the strikeout of Beltre. Big strikeout for Zide. If Adrian was able to take that pitch, he would have been up there with a man on third and less than two out. But Zide threw him a good pitch, off speed pitch down, and got him to swing at it. Well, pretty good at bat for Zide right there after giving up a couple of ropes. No, so with first base open, they're going to intentionally walk AJ Przinski and leave it up to Alex Rios against Josh Zide. AJ looking over to Rios and saying, okay, they did this uh, to Beltre the other night in front of me, and you saw what I did. Now it's your turn. Krasinski came through uh, last night with a big two-run single that got things going for the Rangers in that 11-run third inning. Now he will take one more wide one, intentionally delivered by Zayed, and Head on down to first. That loads the bases now with two outs. And Alex Rios coming up. Rios, an RBI single in the second. Since then, 
as fly to center and ground to first. Rios has never faced Josh Zide, but he has faced a situation like this before. Base is loaded. Three career grand slams to his resume. You got Andrus, Kinsler, and Pierzynski, third, second, and first. And the first pitch off speed and inside for ball one. After the first two fastballs were ripped into left field, he hasn't thrown many <laughs> fastballs. He's gone to the off-speed pitches. Kind of backed away of that man a little bit. I don't blame him. The 1-0 to Rios. In the dirt and gets away. Down the line to score is Elvis Andrews. And the Rangers increase their lead. It's now 4-2. A huge wild pitch. Gives the Rangers a little bit of a cushion. Got to put a little extra on it. Threw it right into the ground, and Castro, who's a very good catcher, just wasn't able to block that ball. And he came straight up off the heel of his glove, and that's not much you can do there. A 2-0 oh, the count to Rios. Now with Kinsler at third, and Pruszynski at second. To right center field. Moving back is Barnes. He has a play on it. Makes the catch, and that will do it. But the Rangers come up with a very big run on a couple of hits, and they leave two. It's Joe Nathan time in Arlington. Rangers four, Astros two. Is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealer. Don't miss the Ford Summer Spectacular featuring Blockbuster Deal. Now playing at your best in Texas Ford dealer. By AT&T, Uverse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PIP-ATT. Rethink possible. And by Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. The Rangers, uh... A little added in church, four to two now. They lead the Astros. As Joe Nathan comes into the ball game. The steaming cup of Joe, and it has been a steaming hot year for Joe Nathan. Thirty-six saves in thirty-eight opportunities. Rest of the numbers for Nathan: that one sixty-three ERA and opposition hitting. Just 161 against him. 27 hits in 49 innings. Jason Castro starting things off, and Nathan fires a strike on the outside corner. Castro tonight, one for three, had a fourth inning single. Joe Nathan is uh, 
faced Castro three times in the past, walked him once, and struck him out twice. Drops the breaking ball in, a big hook. It is nothing and two. Joe Nathan last worked two nights ago against uh, the Mariners and took the loss in that 4-3 uh, game on Sunday afternoon. Worked an inning, gave up a run on two hits. Got him swinging. Three pitches, and Joe Nathan dispatches Jason Castro. One gone. Castro's a pretty good hitter, too. Well, Chevron, would like to remind you, tomorrow night, right here, 7 o'clock on Fox Sports Southwest, Eric Bedard and Derek Holland. Battle of left-handers. Bedard at 3-9. and nine, Holland at 9-6. and six. We will be with you on Fox Sports Southwest. The Rangers and the Astros conclude the series, and the Rangers conclude the homestand. Here's Chris Carter and Joe Nathan throwing nothing but strikes and on the corners. Carter struck out twice tonight and walked. That 0 and 2. Crowd of 39,009. And they are all behind Joe Nathan and the Rangers right now. Nathan popping that fastball at 95, but couldn't entice Carter to go up out of the strike zone. 1 and 2 the count. Got him swinging. Fastball down at 94, and Carter is gone. Two gone. Matt Dominguez, the final hope for the Astros. Well, Joe's not messing around today. A lot of strikes, good velocity, great location. Actually, he just threw that one right by Carter. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Dominguez one for three is accounted for both the Runs for the Astros with his home run. He takes strike one. The crowd now on their feet. All 39,009 of them. And they have watched Joe Nathan come out here pumping strikes and quality strikes. Nothing in two to Dominguez. Joe Nathan trying to seal his 37th save of the year and give the Rangers their 73rd win of the year. The 0-2. 1-2. Nathan closes this out. The Rangers, for the first time this year, would go to 20 games over 500. Mark, they had approached four times, including tonight. They have never gotten there. 1-2 pitch. Now 2-2. Two and two. Like Joe Nathan just said to himself, okay, let's, let's take care of this right here. Yep, got a two-run lead. Go get him. Couldn't get Dominguez to go out of the strike zone, and the count has gone full. Well, if Dominguez is able to reach, Max Stasi, the uh, youngster brought up from double A today, is waiting in the on-deck circle. And Nathan is hoping that battle doesn't occur. Nathan to the wind, the payoff pitch. Got him swinging. Nathan comes in, locks down the ball game as he strikes out the side. And the Rangers have won it tonight, four to two. They make it two in a row over the Astros and their 13th victory in 15 tries against Houston this year their fourth in five games here at Rangers ballpark in Arlington so Adrian Beltre going the other way with a home run put the Rangers on top to stay and Joe Nathan able to close down the ball game here tonight a uh, good win for the Rangers Joe Nathan came in and just shut him down. Three straight strikeouts. But in Travis Blackley's first start for the Rangers, he was solid, gave up only the two-run homer. And then, as usual, the bullpen gets it done. They pitched five innings tonight. They beat the young right-hander, Jared Kozart, 
first time he's given up more than two runs in a game, and I can see why. He had great stuff tonight. He just hung a curveball really late in the game, one of the last pitches he threw, and that's the one that Adrian Beltre hit out of the ballpark to give the Rangers a 3-2 to two lead. Well, the Rangers go to 73 and 53 as DirecTV shows you the updated standings in the AL West. The Rangers and the A's still tied in the loss column, but the Rangers uh, have played one more game. They have a two-game advantage in the win column. Oh, one game separating the two right now, and for Seattle, 15 games out, the Angels 17 out, and the Astros now 31 and a half games off the pace. And right here, let's go to John Radigan. John? Yeah, Buzz, what a great night at Rangers Ballpark in Arlington. The Rangers come from behind to win and set their high water mark for the season at 20 games over 500. And the Rangers nation has responded wonderfully to our relief efforts for the victims of the tornado.